Okay. Straight sword time. Short sword, long sword, broad sword, weathered straight sword, lord sword, and straight sword. We need the noble's slender sword, cane sword, warhawk talon. Okay, let's do noble slender sword first. Hey, Cheek Cheek, yes, I am early today. Thank you for joining. This is a good farm for this sword, that's for sure. It's a... Do you keep your foul foot buff if you warp? I don't think so. It's probably going to be long enough for one full farm, you know? One full uh, run through. Look, this is what the this is what the farming was all is all about. Okay? Now we're really doing it for real. Good luck. Strap in. I'm curious again. Let's just see if we keep the buff after warping, but I'm pretty sure no. Nah, okay.
There's six total here. Okay. Super windy here all of a sudden. Silver Falfoot's actually lasting quite a bit. So as long as we don't warp, we get like three or four runs out of it. Which is good because we're going to be using a lot of them. Hey, Seven Blood, how are you? Living the dream, I hope. Pretty good. I've been pretty much offline on most things and managed to get my degree at last. Yay, congrats. That's awesome. That's great news. Is this Arthur's Campaign New Age Edition? I wish. Arthur's Campaign, man. That would pop off in views. Someone out there's got to make a follow-up to Arthur's Campaign so that <laughs> I can cash in. Play the next mission of Warcraft 3, please. Crying face? Every person that asks delays the number of days until the next Warcraft 3 video releases. At a certain point, you'd think, I should have accidentally gotten this by now. With a 1% drop rate, after you kill about 100 of them, you would expect that that's when it would drop. That's the whole point of a probability. But, you know. Oh gosh, I went past it. I don't think we've killed 100 yet, but...
This is one of the more difficult grinds in the game, that's for sure. The, uh, the chances of this sword dropping is like 1%. Which again, you basically kill 100. There's like 7 of them at this specific place. We're also increasing our item find a little bit. And by a little bit, I mean quite a bit. So, it should be more than 1%. But, still, you know. Can't help but wonder how many, how many runs we're going to have to do. Some of them are going to be really, really long. And I'm, you know, I'm cool with that. It's kind of relaxing for me. So, I'll see you when, uh... There's probably three or four weapons like this that are going to be... Like, actually absurd. Hey, catch up. I guess it can't hurt also to put on the... the arcane mask. We'll do that once our current... Foul foot wears off. Should we do a counter for normal tries to collect the 1% items? I mean, you can if you want. It's going to be a long... It's it's a lot. It's going to be a lot. The answer is a lot. <laughs> a lot of tries. actually not increasing my arcane stat at all. Am I crazy? Oh, okay, never mind. It gives you plus eight, and then we want to put on Godric's rune to give us plus five. So every, every little bit, you know? I guess we could do some of this. And we can do some of this. So that gets us to 63 arcane, which is not bad. And I, I'd like, again, we could dump stats into arcane to get up to 99. I just don't think it's that worth it. 40 extra item find compared to the amount we're getting from the amulet and from the foul foot is just, it's so negligible. Granted, I guess if you took that percentage and you applied it across every single item over time, I guess that would come into play. So, maybe I shouldn't discount that. Are you a New Game Plus? No, we just haven't died very much. <laughs> and it has been spending all our runes. Just that good, man. But we've beaten all the content in the game short of Farama Azula. Azula. We haven't lit the tree up. That's the only thing we haven't done. I'm doing well, Magic Turtle. How are you? I have today off from work, so I'm like, you know what? Let's get into the grind. And we're starting strong with one of the lowest drop rate items in the game. Which is... The Noble Slender Sword. Which, if you can get super ultra lucky and just manage to get it to drop in Lim Limgrave, just like not really farming it, but you get it, it's one of those where like, you should just use it because it's so rare. And it's nice because you can apply any Ash of War to it. 
that's pretty rare as well to have like a decently scaling decently scaling item and we'll also know it, it will have dropped because the the glow of the item is blue oh okay done look at that It wasn't blue. I thought that one was blue. Okay. What's next? Warhawk Talon. Where's the best place to farm this? It's good to just look it up so that I don't have to figure it out myself, basically. There are formulae out of the door from the rampart to... Okay. That... I don't know if that's the best place. I'm thinking I'm going to level up my bow with the hopes that we can one-shot the birds at the lower end of the game. Noble Slender Sword was like, what, 10 minutes of grinding? That's really not that bad. There's probably four or five items that are going to be particularly bad. Magma Sword, Octopus Hat, Black Dumpling Hat, Envoy's Giant Colossus Horn. Um, surely there's more, but... We don't need to use our Sombers, per se. Okay, so now we go to Stormvale. And start killing some birds. We might get a lot of Stormhawk Feathers from this, too, which is good. Let's just hope we, if we can one-shot them, that would be great. We can. Okay, great. Daytime J Bro stream sent from Good Friday to Great Friday? Hell yeah. <laughs> I appreciate you, buddy. <laughs> Sorcery and Elden Ring is just fantastic. There's just so many great options. Yeah, I think you'll really like that. Leave a, a foul foot in effect as well. All things considered, our arcane is pretty high. My Sharani, also known as Anakin Skywalker. Again, I don't understand the name, I'm going to be honest with you. It's like you're two different people. Kind of like Mer Merica is Radagon, you know? Marks are closer, which means a brief respite. Five euro from Shardundred. A small tribute to, to Jay's based orc queen. That's right. Dude, we've got the serpent bow. Oh, yeah. We've got the dragon communion seal because we're friends with dragons. Oh. 
You best believe it. We've got the cloak. Very fitting for her. The only thing we don't have is the... Uh, is the ring blade, which unfortunately is just something we can't have in this game, which is disappointing. Yay! Okay, that was relatively easy. Okay, what's next? Cane sword, warhawk talon. Okay, that's done. Five euros is what, 40 bucks in, in USD? I think USD is is decently comparable now to, to euros. Euros used to be maybe 2, 2.5-ish, which was a lot. And then it was around 2. I wouldn't be surprised, surprised if it's around 150 now. Let's see. USD to euros. Euros to USD. Oh, okay. They're they're like near comparable. It's a dollar eight. I remember when the euro was new, it was a pretty solid exchange rate. But the U the U.S. dollar has been really strong lately. So it's not a competition, though. We're all friends here. Lazuli glintstone, Lazuli glintstone sword. Okay. Chance to drop from Lazuli Sorcerers, found in most areas of Raya Lucaria or Caria Manor. A good place to farm is directly south of the schoolhouse cl classroom. He's very close to Grace. All right, let's do it. I just got back from England where my Canadian dollar is like 50 cents on the dollar to pounds. Hurt the wallet. Yeah. Yep. I think that's perhaps more of a Canadian th issue than... Uh, <clears throat> British pound issue. British pounds, though. Um, I, I I went to Britain when I was in high school, and it was like a it it was like a dollar eighty per British pound, and now it's close to one to one. But again, that's mostly a function of the dollar being strong, and not so much that other currencies have lost a ton of value. How many J-Bucks is a pound? J-Bucks are one of the strongest currencies available. It's approximately one, one million dollars to one J-Buck. So that's why when you win Maparino and you become a J-Buck millionaire, you're basically the richest person on the planet. That's just, that's just the truth. That's just the truth. I don't make the rules. Hey, another easy one. Okay. Inventory. Lazuli Glint Blade. Done. Karian Knight Sword. Crystal Sword. Rotten Crystal Sword. Mickelin Knight Sword. Ornamental Straight Sword. Golden Epitaph. Sword of St. Trina. Regalia of Yaushid. Coated sword. Sword of Night and Flame. Straight swords. Done. Put it in the books. Great sword time. Bastard sword. Claymore. We're looking for Iron Great Sword. That drops from the Leonine Misbegotten's. Closest side of... Okay, let's see. North of the Halig Tree... Okay. Much more likely to drop during nighttime? What? That don't make no sense. I don't believe that for a second. But anyway, um, we, can, we can farm this in Halig Tree, which is not great... But this one's the closest, so here we go. Hey, Dennis, I'm doing well. How are you? Is this like a bot thing where people have, like, 
one name and then in parentheses another fictional name? Is this like a thing that are, that people do now? Is this like a bot thing? I, it feels like a bot thing, doesn't it? Am I crazy? Oh, I think he dropped it straight up. Oh, oh that would have been that would have been too good. See you, Char. For capitalistic reasons. <laughs> you watch some Warcraft vids? Congrats. I hope you like them. Unfortunately, I think we have everything from these dudes, so there's not much a point in having to kill them, but I think we got to do it. We might die a few times this part, too. This is a very highly... This is a very high endgame zone, and even though, you know, my stats are pretty high, there's a good chance we're going to die. <laughs> but we persevere. We try. Also, our attack power is lower because we're getting some extra item find, and I don't love that. It's not that bad, but it still sucks. See, depending on the attack rolls we get, we might just die. This guy's got, like, no health. Kill this guy. Kill this man. I'm going to record some Chronicles of Second War this evening. I, I promise. You have my solemn vow. Because I'm nothing. Nothing without you know. This little asshole... It's definitely, it's only a matter of time until we just straight up die. <laughs> I think maybe what we have to do is kill the flying ones. Just because if we go straight for Leonine, it's, we're going to, you know, there's a good chance we're going to die. Would it be best maybe to lure it to us without pulling the other one? Because that's the challenge I'm having, is having to fight all three. It just feels like there's a great chance we're going to die. Now that those two are dead, this dude is easy because we can keep him mostly stunlocked. Or he kills us instantly. No problem. And then you have to wait. Uh, I don't think this is necessarily any faster or safer.
Can't wait for Jazz Arena. Yeah, maybe later today. Definitely got to get some practice in. Maybe after dinner. Not sure if it'll be during stream time or not. But if it is, you know, we'll do it towards the end of the stream here today. Let's go, bro. Come on. Cool. Again, not... I mean, some of these, like, these more notorious farms actually going okay. A lot of these have the chance to be really, really rough, and that one, I mean, we died once, but otherwise, it's really not too bad. Okay, Iron Greatsword, and then, is it the Cat Greatsword? No, okay. Iron Greatsword. Scroll down a little bit. Lord Sworns. Knight Greatsword. We need Banished Knight Greatsword. Wait. Wait. Knight Greatsword. So I need the Forked Greatsword. I think... I know... I have a general... There's one dungeon where it's like... He's like right... I want to say it's... It's one of these dungeons down here. This one, yeah. Cause I'm nothing. No, I mean I'm doing weapons now. Part of me maybe should be focused also on gear as we go. I don't think I ever found the Halic Tree. Oh, that's one of the best zones in the game. I talked all about it in last night's stream. Last night was a fun lore discussion stream. I think we already had that one, unfortunately, but we're looking for the great sword this one drops. What's the time you have? It's currently 1.10 p.m. on the eastern coast of the United States. The, we had a good discussion about it last night, but I agreed with one of the chatters who was saying how, like, the first time through the game, once you get to the Halig Tree, it becomes exhausting because everything in that part of the game can, like, two and two or three shot you. It stun locks you, you get hit two or three times, you're dead. And it's, like, really frustrating. So you just kind of get fatigued by it. Whereas... Now, on newer playthroughs, I feel a little more refreshed when I get there. I know what to expect, so I don't get killed as quickly. I mean, you get killed if you get hit just as quickly. But more importantly, it's like, if you know what enemies are where, and you have a general idea of how to progress through the area, you won't die as much. And, like, I appreciate the... I just appreciate the area with, like, the music and the, the ambiance and... Just, like, the general feeling of the zone. I just love it. I love Alphael so much. This one's being a little difficult, but, you know. This is an easy... Like, this is an example of an easy farm. Like, I don't even mind it if it takes a long time, just because it's so simple to run to and from. I don't have to think too much about using my silver foul feet. There we go. I can just walk back to the grace so that I don't have to... Like, if you have to warp back, you lose the effect of your... Foul foot. I was fatigued after Malaketh. I yes, I agree. Okay, Knight's Great Sword. We're missing Banished Knight Great Sword. Let's see where that the best place to farm that is. Oh, the um Dragon Communion Place. Also the gear, I guess. I really like the Dragon Knight Helm, but the only place to farm it effectively is... Um, Castle Soul. One of the worst places in the game, honestly.
I want to say there are two. Two of these knights here, but I'm not sure. Ooh, look at that. Well, we got the helm. It's the ch it's the unaltered chest piece. Granted, couldn't you just get an altered version and unalter it through Bach? So you don't have to necessarily farm it separately? I don't know now that I think about that. Basically got the whole set already. <laughs> Again, that's one less thing for later. When, we're get to, when we get to the gear portion. I think the gear portion is honestly worse than the weapons, but... I don't know. That's hard to say. Because it's like, you have one enemy, they drop their weapon, maybe a shield, and then four pieces of gear. It's not like any individual piece has a higher chance than the others, usually. So each piece is just about as bad, because it's all coming from the same loot table. Three hours to beat Malekith. I want to learn how to use the... The parry item that you get from Bernal. That Rykard was going to use against him. That seems really neat. I think a, a quality of life thing that they added to this game I really, really love is as soon as the enemy starts their death animation, you can tell if they've dropped something or not. I really, 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 really appreciate that. I'm a huge fan of that. So then I can just turn around instantly if I need. So I think Dark Souls 2 worked this way. I'm not sure if Elden Ring does or not, but every enemy has like a, a certain loot table. And they're, they're able to drop a certain number of things. In Dark Souls 2, it was exactly once. In this game, like, this dude's dropped the gauntlets more than, more than once. So it might be maybe multiple items. And this game takes a lot of things from Dark Souls 2 because there's a co-director from Dark Souls 2 along with Miyazaki. And it makes me think that maybe the enemies have a strict loot table. So say the sword has a 5% drop chance. And every gear piece has a 5% drop chance. And once you basically empty their loot table and you collect everything except the sword, it starts to seem like they're not dropping anything. But it's really just that they've dropped everything they can except the one thing you want. And that still only has a 5% drop chance. So you start thinking, man, these things aren't dropping anything. And it's mostly because you've sort of exhausted their loot table. Well, at the same time, this guy's dropped gauntlets three times. So that's starting to feel less and less true here. <laughs> but in Dark Souls 2 that's how it worked and it was very confusing because you'd go through this, these like feasts or famines where you'd start farming something and then you'd get just, a, just an absolute ton of drops. And then it, then it sort of went, sort of seemed like you started going through a period where you were getting nothing at all. And you're like, wait a minute. This doesn't seem, you know, what happened? And it's because you've emptied the loot tables. I think Dark Souls 2 had some very odd things in the background that people still don't really understand. That, w that was never has never really been figured out regarding item find and enemy loot tables. Because it almost seems like if you try and farm something for too long, it stops dropping anything at all for like a solid 10 to, 10 to 20 minutes. It's like, it almost like is designed to force you to go to a different place. Come on, bro. And I think we've ex we've bought everything as well. We might have to go check Selen. She might be the last vendor that we haven't exhausted. I, we bought all her spells, but she also sells some gear, I think. Lots of gauntlets today. What game series has your favorite lore? Probably Dark Souls. I've recently really gotten into Elden Ring. It's only one game, not really a series, but it's so big that it kind of functions similarly. 
I like things that that really engage my curiosity. There's too much out there where like there's an answer for everything, and what I want is something that's purposefully left mysterious, not just like, "Ooh, it's left open because we're going to answer it in the next entry of the series." Nah, 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 nah. Nothing, nothing without your love. Do 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 do. We're gonna do this for a while, and then it's gonna become a situation where we need to go far more. Um, bird's feet, fowl feet. It's also, I can't help but ask if eight points of item find from the eight extra arcane with the helm we're wearing is worth the reduced um, attack power. Where's L Warcraft lore sit with you? I'm going to be honest, I don't really care about Warcraft lore. Like, nearly at all. I'm not saying it's bad. Please don't get it twisted. I just don't care about it. Maybe this is um, this is sacrilege, but I feel like the newer Warcraft lore is more interesting to me, just because it's kind of like, okay, well, where where could we go with this, as opposed to retreading the same bullshit. Forty K universe is great as well. That's more of a setting as opposed to having a a full on story narrative. Another world? Oh boy. Okay. I saw that rivers of blood. <laughs> I saw it. Thanks for the free rune arc. We'll use those a lot when we get to the DLC. So you think the old Warcraft lore is too similar to real life mythology lore? Uh, no, and I'm not sure if I said anything that indicated as such. I'm not accusing you of putting words in my mouth, but if you... I don't know. I'm just wondering, like, did I say something that made it seem like that's what I meant? <laughs> no. I just don't care. I don't know. It's just not that interesting to me. When I say new, I mean, like, it's not fucking Arthas. It's not orcs versus humans. It's not like, oh, look, it's the bleeding hollow clan. Like, I don't care. <laughs> I think it's mostly because it's just... the The mythology has existed for so long that it's like... Okay, what's the next expansion? Is there something interesting with it? But if it's just like, oh, it's Thrall and Jaina again. Like, I just don't care. Kill those characters or just let them die of old age. I don't care. There's really nothing left. There's nothing interesting to speculate on. I guess the giant sword, which is the next expansion. But like, I don't, I don't know. I don't play it, so I don't really keep up with it. I'm not gonna pay a monthly fee <laughs> just so I can keep up with the story. I can just like read the synopsis on the wiki every so often. You know, where is the sword? You've dropped every piece of everything once, at least, at least twice at this point. But that's how, uh, that's how it goes. Again, I'm not trying to shit on Warcraft lore. Some people love it. I just not I'm just not engaged with it. So That's why like There it is. I almost feel a little bad because like Chronicles of the Second War is a really huge achievement, especially in the world of Warcraft 3 Reforged, which desperately needs community content. But I just don't care about the Warcraft 2 lore enough to like feel like wow. It's Gul'dan! Wow! It's Doomhammer! I just don't care. 
Um, and that's not the fault of those creators, and it's really not the fault of Warcraft 2. It's just... I'm just not... It doesn't engage with me. It's There's no... There's just really nothing interesting about it to me at this point, because it's been out for so long. I'm just, like, fine, you know? But different people will engage with it differently. That's for sure. Okay, Knight's Great Sword, Banish Knight Great Great Sword, Forked Great Sword. Flamberge, Gargoyle's Great Sword, Gargoyle's Black Blade, Inseparable Sword, Sword of Milo's. Scroll down. Marias Executioner's Sword. Ordovis's Great Sword, Alabaster Lord's Sword. Hang on, someone is a... Let me just kill it. <laughs> it's making me nervous. There was two the whole time, by the way. Okay. Death's Poker, after Alabaster Lord's Sword. Health and Steeple, Blasphemous Blade, uh, requires a boss soul. Golden Order Great Sword. Dark Moon Great Sword, Sacred Relic Sword requires a boss soul. Okay, Great Swords are done. What's next? Colossal Swords. Ooh la la. Starting with the Zweihander, my beloved. Zweihander, Great Sword. Watchdog's Great Sword we need to get. Troll's Golden Sword, Troll's Knight Sword, Royal Great Sword, Grafted Blade Great Sword, Ruins Great Sword. Star Surge Great Star Scourge Great Sword is a boss weapon. God Slayer Great Sword we have, and Malakath's Black Blade. So we just need the Watchdog's Great Sword, which is Okay, you know what we can do? We can farm two things at once, maybe. We can maybe farm two things at once with this next one. Because we need this, but then we also want the Fire Monk Sword, and they're both accessible sort of in the same place. I think I really like the old stuff from the first couple of games because it's nostalgia triggering, but I never really played WoW, so I don't know or care much about the new stuff alternatively. Yeah, that makes sense. I think it's more just like the old stuff has been retreaded enough times that I'm like, I'm just not sure what new we can really get from it. Nice. Oh! First try? Come on. Come on! <laughs> Let's go. Okay, now this guy's sword also. This th this one's this is one that will take a while. Is this guy's sword? I can't believe we got the watchdog one like like that. That guy doesn't have it. I think, as far as I know, this guy in here is the only one that drops it in the whole game. <laughs> Which is crazy. I 
think I need to kill these imps because they're gonna force me every time to come back in here and reveal them. I'm a big fan of letting characters die and moving on rather than pumping them for content over and over. I think what's challenging too is you either keep them in and being heroes forever, but then there's like no way to gracefully let them go. Because again, it's like, do you have to kill them? Is it like the only way to kill them? Because that seems unfortunate. Because like you want, you want characters to like have their win, get their victory, and then they just like, you know, live out a nice life. So it's like the only way you can do that is have something take place much later. In the timeline. Hey Ari, I'm doing well. Yes, I am enjoying my long weekend. Off from work today? Mm. They could be mentors for new heroes. The problem is, then the scope of the enemy threat can never be too big. Because then it's like, okay, well, why don't these truly great heroes from the past get involved? Let's see if maybe we can just avoid those imps completely. Perfect. And that's what happened with Thrall. They wanted to just, like, let Thrall go, but then they had to bring him back. They had to and eventually bring him back. And it's like, well, did you have to? And it's like, well, it, the threat is so big, like, why wouldn't Thrall, this great hero from the past who cares about the world, get involved? And it's a great question. And maybe it just comes down to, like, well, he's just a... He's just old, man. He's just an old guy. But that's not necessarily what people want. I'm nothing, nothing without your love. Cause I need you to find. Question is, is this one worth its own, like, I have to silver pickle foul foot it every single time. I think it's worth it. And, like, am I correct in thinking this is the only guy that drops it? I mean, at the end of the day, it all comes down to risk analysis and investment. You can't get people to invest in making some big, expensive media property unless you can promise some sort of return. Something less, less risky. What, you know, it's too risky to say, like, this is brand new. People have no attachment to it. We have no way to measure what the reception is going to be. But please, you know, spend money and let us make this. Versus... Hey, it's Thrall. We know people will respond well to Thrall because they recognize him. Perfect. Oh, okay, great. That's done. I mean, we weren't even to that section of weapons yet, but I'm like, we're here, so we're going to do that. Great swords are done. We're at rapier time. Let's go back and back. Thrusting swords. Rapier. S stock. Noble's S stock is going to be a whole thing. We have two S stocks. Clean rot. Knight's sword is a thrusting sword. Roger's rapier. 
ant spur rapier, frozen needles. So we need the noble's S stock. Yuck. Because that this is another one that's going to be a little rough. I think the chance for this to drop is less. Or I'm sorry, it's uh, it's higher. Than the sword. Four can be among the troll pulled carriage caravan to the west of Waypoint Ruins. All right. Yeah, this one might be. This one might also be a little nasty, but here we go. Waypoint Ruins. Come out of the cellar. Kill everything at the caravan. I think there's some Caden set stuff that we haven't gotten either, so. There's probably some noble armor, too, that we haven't gotten. I guess we didn't need to farm the Slender Sword if we were going to be farming this group of stuff. I probably should get something that does AoE also. We got the hat. We've got the we've got the foul foot active. We could probably do two runs of this without having to use a new one. Not that farming those is too bad, but that you know, over time, it's probably more of a time save to not have to farm up the foul feet. See you, Samuel. Yeah, happy early Easter. Dude, he's cracked. We're getting the aristocrat gear too, which is certainly not bad. Let's warp back. Let's do like one foul foot per two runs. Speaking of how many of these do we have left? Only 45. Again, we're gonna be we're gonna have to farm those. And it's a fine balance. I would need some sort of chart that could map out like how many. The time farming foul feet, how how worth it is it compared to the time saved you know it's hard it's hard to to know that What I kind of need to know, too, is which are the ones carrying the S-Stocks so that I can only kill those. <laughs> One can be found northwest of the debate parlor site of Grace, guarding the stairs. Oh, um, hmm. I know what which one that one is don't think that's really a time save. If we can farm four right here. See, 
I think that's the sword. Now let's see if we can get three runs per foul foot. I mean, hey, we've gotten through like four categories of weapons. Really pretty good, all things considered. I don't recall playing Dark Souls. What about the lore do you like? Um, I just like the way that it's presented. The world clearly has tons of history and details. The creators writ were written it had written it that way and then they purposely removed huge chunks of it which purposely leaves a ton to your imagination similar to how real world works how the real world works there's just plenty of stuff where there's no sometimes there's just no answers we don't know people lived a long time ago there's whole fields of study dedicated to trying to figure out you know what was life like for these types of people and so you're sort of exposed to all these interesting historical things, and you can only wonder, like, whoa, what, what happened here? And a lot of times, there's no, there's no answer. You get just enough information, just enough information to sort of, they need, they need definitive answers. I, uh, like, yes, I recognize the desire for them for my it, within myself, but also... I've had a lot of fun in instances where that doesn't exist, where I don't have it. So, that is something I appreciate. Seems like at this point we've gotten all the noble gear as well, which is good. Gives the chance to explore and theorize. World lore that tells you everything gets a bit stale. Yeah, exactly. And again, it, it harkens to real life, but the stakes are lower because it's a video game. So I appreciate that. But it's just like, there's a lot of things in the world where uh, there's, you know, there can be the question of like, what happened when? Oh my god, I the, so, the sword dropped. Oh man, so now we j I, I didn't need to farm the sword separately because I would have been up here farming the S-stock. Oh no, well, that's a bummer. It's not. It wasn't like a huge time loss, but I guess that's the other thing too is we have to look at this farming a bit more holistically and think, is there anything we can farm together so that I don't have happen what just happened? Like, the Slender Sword dropping there is a much lower chance because there's only one or two that has it versus we were farming earlier at a place where there were, like, seven. But it's like, look, if we're going to be farming the S-Stock anyway, we might as well try our hand at that first. because we're doing it anyway.
The other thing about Dark Souls 2 is the information you do get is very cryptic. You get the you get the implication that a lot of NPCs understand what's going on and they sort of assume that you do too even though you don't. <laughs> so they when they give you information, it's from like a conversational standpoint that they sort of assume you have some sort of foundational knowledge, but you actually don't. And in that way, they deliver way less information and it comes through with a level of bias that you have to sort of filter it through. And yeah, so I've, I've come to really appreciate that. Noble S stocks playing a little hard to get. But yeah, I don't think I've ever played a game that has that engages my curiosity like FromSoft. Miyazaki directed one specifically. And it's because he has a very specific approach to it, which he has shared, which is when he was younger, he would read like, he'd be given like German, I want to say they were German books, and he couldn't read most of them. But he could understand enough of them to get like a very basic, very basic framework. And so he's like, he's able to recapture that feeling through this type of storytelling. And I think he's very good at it. Oh, I got an aristocrat headband. Okay. What's Dark Souls inspired? I don't know, man. Berserk? Partly? Oh my god, these dudes with the torches are actually the worst!
<laughs> yeah, Elden Ring, definitely you get a King Arthur vibe regarding Godfrey and like um, Radagon as a Lancelot type character. Oh my gosh, we gotten two slender swords but no S stock. Holy shit, what are the odds? Come on, S stock. No. Well, we're gonna have a lot of row of fruit, that's for sure. Which version of Lancelot? I have no idea, man. The one that has an affair with Guinevere, that one. The one that steals your girl. I'm thinking we find just find a new place to farm. This one is uh, frankly obnoxious. one more run here to use up our foul foot. And then I see when it says directly south of the rampart path site of grace, digging by the cliffside. Rampart side path. Where is that? Rampart side path.
Okay. Old Rampart side. Oh, okay. Flesh toned, is it? It's pink. It's this, it's this guy, I think. Yeah, okay, that's it. So that's the guy we'll f we will farm now. That is very close to this grace. Appreciate that. Sure, it was stream when. I know which one it is, too. I can just keep killing that one guy. Drop golden sunflowers too. That's a plus. <laughs> Thank you, first member. Hello. I, I'm thinking this is more efficient than the run than the rounds we were making previously. I think so. Because he's literally right there. We did get all the gear doing the other run, so I think this is I think this is appropriate. This is also a more efficient usage of our silver foul foot. What are we ranting about today? All I'm doing is farming items. I need some good rant topics. Holy shit. Somebody prompted me with something controversial. <laughs> Let's go. Zero Space versus that other game's name I forgot about. Um, Stormgate? I personally don't really see it as much of a competition. I think there's more than enough market share for them both. But I think it also highlights how expensive it is to make games. Hey, Matic, how are you? How's your, um... 
How's that game you're making going? Again, in terms of um, Zero Space and Stormgate, like, it's nice that they're not outwardly competitive. I think that's appreciated by the community. You can certainly engage with both. I personally don't have much of a preference. Zero Space looks like it's it's trying to be strongly a StarCraft II successor. Much more flashy, that's for sure. And um, Stormgate looks like it's taking elements from several recent real-time strategy games. It's not as bad. Pal World, did, Pal World did it with $6 million and pulled in $200 million. Yeah, but that's like one in a million. Like, is the implication that every game can just be a smash hit with lightning in a bottle? Pal World clearly was not thought like it was going to be... A lot of the games that we see as being the ones that are the biggest hits are not ones I think that are designed thinking we're going to be the next big hit. They're just like making a game. And... It just sort of takes off. Very rarely do you have these AAA games where it's like, yes, this is specifically designed to be the next big hit. Maybe like Apex Legends was one I can think of. Overwatch. Like these were ones that they specifically designed to be huge hits that mostly succeeded in that arena. But most games are just made to be games and every so often one just really hits. Like Helldivers 2, great example. Pal World, good example. Um, Among Us, great example. They knew what they were doing. <laughs> And Masters of Memory. I'm not saying that they didn't know what they were doing. I'm just saying, like, I don't think that they expected the smash hit success that they got. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think... I think a lot of games don't... A lot of games that really take off generally are not expecting the size of player base that they get. Dude, this guy needs to drop this S-Stock. I've been on this one for a while. I'm not counting the caravan farming, though, because we got a lot of stuff that we did need from that. Like, a lot of the aristocrat, aristocrat garb we did get. Got a bit stuck with performance and pathfinding. Understandable. Sort of tying into the other conversation we we're having, which is, you know, making real-time strategy games is hugely expensive compared to a lot of other types of games. That's the other thing. Because we're talking about, like, oh, this game, they spent blank dollars and they, you know, 10 to 10 x their money or more. And you're like, oh, well, that's nice. But a lot of games are made and are relatively cheap, relatively cheap to make. Real-time strategy is not one of those. It's very expensive comparatively with, uh, what is required to make it. Get the flippin' ass stock, you fool! I can't believe I have three slender swords at this point. That's crazy. Many AAA games are bombing due to woke messaging. Bro, I hate to say this, but I think you're on the wrong channel. <laughs> I, <laughs> I think the gaming community... The, the subset of the gaming community that is obsessed with the word woke is actually retarded. So, sorry, but that's, uh, that's just my opinion, man. Like, get over it. Just, like, culture war silliness. But I'm an old man, so what do I know? I don't have the same wants and desires as the kids. I could play as an anthropomorphized avocado in the game. I don't... It doesn't matter to me. Okay, dude, with Torch, you're killing me. If 
Cross Giant made the dumb decision of headquartering in California. Most of their budget goes to paying exorbitant fees and taxes. Yeah, and like your employees are, you're paying like, you're paying very high salaries for cost of living there. But a lot of them came from Blizzard, so it's like, well, we already lived here, and this is the expectation. And they also started it at a time when there was a lot of angel investment. Uh, and now that's really dried up in recent year and a half, two years-ish. Um, so they had, like, one solid year of good, hopeful investment, and now it's a lot less so. As tech sectors, tech sector investment has been going through a substantial rough patch, I think, probably since like mid early 2023. The rest of the economy is doing really good, but that is not one of them. That's not one of the areas. Can't really comment on that. I guess it depends on the scope. Yeah, definitely. I've had some indie um, RTS developers contact me directly. They, they would email me and kind of explain the situation when it comes to funding. Like, they just they need some cash to get them through the initial stages of the game. And um, it's really hard to find. And a lot of the comparison to StarCraft II is challenging because StarCraft II had a pretty large budget from a studio that was very well established. And they were, I don't, I don't want to say it was a blank check, but relatively speaking, it kind of was. It was in development for 10 years and was able to really flesh out a lot of things specifically like pathfinding. That um, really proved to be a challenge for smaller studios. I care about the game being good, the characters being good. If you try to throw political BS messaging in the game and push an agenda, it won't sell well. And that is evidence that's the case with numbers. Okay, why don't you show me some? Why don't let's let's hear some of these. Or are you just talking about you saw some forum messages that validated your opinion and therefore we have data that these things didn't sell well? Because there's a lot of data that there's plenty of things that have some amount of diversity in them that sell just fine. And also it, to, to say, like, something is engaging with a current event, current cultural event, as political, is, it's, it's brain rot, my dude. Like, seriously, you need to, you need to examine these beliefs. Where did they come from? I assume you're here because you've watched me play Warcraft 3. Warcraft 3 is full, absolutely chock full of political messaging. But something tells me that a lot of folks don't engage with it that way, and so that for them, that's okay. That's politics. That, that's not politics because it's not controversial to me. It doesn't conflict with my worldview, so therefore it's not political, and it's okay. But because it conflicts with your culture war nonsense, then it's political, and then it's not allowed to be in games. That's the impression that I get. I'd love to hear more from, you know, the alternative perspective. I've thought about this a lot, and I've read about this a lot. I've been exposed to this a lot over the years. So, like, I have a pretty strong opinion on this, and it just feels very lazy to say, there's a gay person in my game, therefore, you're pushing an agenda, and it's political, just because they exist in the game. And it's a very nebulous and fuzzy line to say, well, you can have gay people in the game as long as you're not shoving it down my throat, but like, what does that mean? Like, at what point is it too much for you that it's no longer allowed and it's political? It's just, it's not defined and it's kind of nonsensical to me. Like, these things exist. Um, I don't know. I don't know why, like, when that becomes a problem for certain people. 
And I suspect it's different for every person, which is why it's doesn't seem like the right way to approach it by saying like, oh, it's woke, when something tells me everyone would define that a little differently in terms of like what is allowed and what is not allowed. But again, I have pretty strong opinions on this. I have for many, many years. So it's not like I'm just coming out hot of the gate today. <laughs> I've, uh, I've been engaging with this topic for, for a long, long time. But again, I'm also an old man. And I don't really give a shit about these things and like, oh no, this thing is in a game and it's an agenda. Like, I just don't, I don't care. It doesn't really impact the way that I engage with the game. But for some people, surely it cer certainly sounds like it impacts the amount of fun they're able to have. So I guess, you know gotta take that into account with what you're selling and sometimes it's not even so much whether it's actually in the game or not it's just what the perception is it can affect impact your marketing quite a bit but there have been uh, many many studies done on for lack of a better term the radicalization of the online young young youth aged gamer um, you can read back on, like, the troll farms that Steve Bannon used to run, starting through, like, he started with, like, gold farming in WoW, and um, actually, like, used this type of angle to get young men who were otherwise politically disengaged kind of sucked into this anti-establishment vortex. And the impact of that we still see today. I think it's actually very fascinating. Maybe it's because I hate Felicia Day's voice. <laughs> Based. <laughs> I know, it's just a very interesting topic to me. Just kind of across the board. I can't believe we still haven't gotten what we need from this guy. Holy crap, it's been a long time. Most games can have a message if you look for it is probably... Yeah, that's a very concise way of what I'm saying as well. Generally, I think what people will ascribe as, like, being, like, too woke for them, they'll, they're will they kind of, like, working backwards. They don't have a premise for the belief. They're starting from, I don't like this thing that's in the game, so I will kind of work backwards and explain why this game is not good. But again, really, at the end of the day, if you just make a fun game... You can put whatever the fuck you want in it. I don't think people would care. So I think it's sort of a misattribution. But I suspect perhaps where some folks on the other end of the spectrum kind of would claim the line is, and it's different for everybody, is like, okay, well, you can have a gay character in the game, but they can't be too gay. <laughs> And it can't be too much of a plot point. And further, if they engage in any way in the world around them that where they're like kind of have some sort of minority status and are treated differently because they are gay, then no, that's not allowed. That's supposedly woke. That's that's gonna be my guess, is how how folks on who who think differently than me, I suppose, would engage with it. And I'm trying to steel man that position, by the way. I'm not saying you know, I just I just don't identify with that. Like I just don't care. Like that's that's just, that's just life. I don't know. People have certain ways that they are in life and they're treated differently because of that. That's just like, that's just reality. It's not an agenda. We need to meet everyone in the middle, gay, multi-ethnic Nazis in the next Wolfenstein. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I get the joke, but if I were to engage with that point seriously, and it was not meant to be, so excuse me for doing so, but, you know, being gay and multi-ethnic in a Nazi society doesn't really... It's sort of like against the four core fundamentals of Nazism, right? 
That's like, I feel like that's kind of like the whole point. One day this S stock is going to drop, but for now we're getting some good banter. I'm gonna have to farm more silver foul feet just for this guy. This is crazy. Was? Is this in response to the whole Nazism thing? What do you mean? Wolfenstein is based off of Nazism that originated from the World War II era. So yes, it would be the same thing. What? We no longer get bangers like Brood War. The story in those cutscenes were amazing and they still are. Oh, nice. Free, uh, free rune arc. I mean, I think they were good. I don't know. I mean, a lot of it is nostalgia. If you put Brood War in the hands of someone now, like someone who's maybe 16 or 17 now, I'm not confident they would enjoy it at all. In fact, I'm pretty confident they wouldn't enjoy it at all. I think to say, like, something is, I mean, I hate to use the word objectively, but to say something is, like, objectively good, relatively speaking, is it kind of has to stand the test of time, and frankly, I don't think the original StarCraft has, in the sense that you can't put it in the hands of somebody like you could Super Mario World, who's 18, who's 36, who's 54, and all of them just be like, oh, okay. I get it, you know? <laughs> but maybe I'm looking at it from too broad of a scope. Which is fair, because real-time strategy is not a broad scope genre. Who needs new videos when we're live right now? What a time to be alive. Oh, I typed were. Gotcha. Sorry. There was a few messages that had scrolled, so that's why I wasn't so sure. Gimme that S-stock. I mean, Wolfenstein is one of those. It's actually a really good microcosm example of this. Like, it's a game that... It's not, like, an incredible game. It's good. It's fun. It's fine. Like, relatively speaking, for the time it came out, I would say New Order and Old Blood were good. New Colossus was decent, too. They're just kind of, like, fun games. But they kind of blew up into this, like, culture war issue... And again, like from my perspective, I look at that happening, I think this is a this is a product of a broader conversation getting forced, like if you want to talk about forcing an agenda, the game itself isn't doing that. It's the response to the game, which is largely directed from like think tanks behind the scenes that are trying to activate and and, and sort of engage people through outrage. That's the agenda, in my opinion. It's not the game. Like, no one's playing Wolfenstein and being like, oh, wow, I've really changed my opinions on, you know, race relations in the United States. 
I mean, maybe that could be a small piece of the puzzle if you're going through some formative years and you're, you know, you took a sociology 101 class for the first time and you're like, oh, I understand now, you know, the disadvantage in, you know, a, a class differences of how people grew up with different opportunities. But, like, no one's playing Wolfenstein and being like, my life has changed. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're probably playing it. You could skip the cutscenes and then just, like, shoot shoot the bad guys and you can dual wield, dual wield two different weapon types and it's a blast. But then like suddenly like the second you see like news articles and like forum threads hugely engaged with you know around the idea of like what the you know the game is so violent. These were real people. We have to humanize you know it's just like that's coming from somewhere. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I think that's what's more interesting to engage with is like, I feel like there's sort of a, there's a, there's a purposeful directive. I guess you could say on both, both angles, one being the game developers, but one being, again, people driving a response. Where now suddenly a woman in Battlefield 1, or whatever the heck, you know, a, it, something being ahistoric suddenly has become, like, the most important problem in the gaming landscape. Like, it's weird, but, like, realistically speaking, I really, really find it hard to believe that people care that much. <laughs> I think... I think they have been made to care too much about something like that. It's, it's like, absolutely. Um, it's like, if you just see something on the news enough times, it sort of convince you that this is a big issue, when prior to that, you're like, honestly, I don't give a shit. Like... It's like when you see, when you hear about plane crashes, and, like, it's a big news story when a plane crashes. But you know why it's a big news story? It's because... Plane crashes rarely happen, and the risk of a plane crash is way, way, way lower than, like, just walking outside your house on any given day, or driving down the street. But, like, you might suddenly think plane crashes and, like, Boeing emergency exit doors flying off is, like, a huge, 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 huge deal. And it's happening all the time, because there's a billion news stories about it. But in reality, the occurrence of that is super low. But the point is, you're being, you're being sort of subtly... I, it's, I mean, it's hard to know if it's malicious or not. That's why I think it's something that's interesting to engage with and, and evaluate and research. Because I do think that there is a maliciousness to purposefully getting people to care a lot about certain things that are not... That don't really impact them very much, if at all. Which distracts from a lot of bigger problems. Again, it's just... A lot of it, again, is just like something being ahistoric in a game, like, unless you're playing a grand strategy game like Crusader Kings 2, which, by the way, in that game, you can shape history where your dynasty can be horses. So, like, even those types of games, there's things that you can just, you can just do weird shit with by manipulating the game state, I guess. But the point is, I just, I just really struggle to understand, I guess I want to understand it more, that suddenly, just magically, a lot of people at the same time as well, coincidentally, just suddenly started caring about games being ahistoric when they never did before. <laughs> but now suddenly, there is an insistence that this is a really big deal. I just, I just really struggle to believe that there's like something genuine behind that. I don't know anything about the Boeing leaker, but that's, I mean, that is, would be interesting to read about, but what I mean is, like, just, I just use the, the Boeing door thing as one example, but again, just, like, the idea that you see 
about plane crashes, and you're like, oh, that's scary. And, but then again, even with the one crash you had read about, it's, it's sad, it's horrifying, but relative to the amount of risk that you take just getting in your car and driving down the street, you're way safer still getting on a plane, even if there, you had just seen something in the news about a plane crash. So that's what I mean, like, depending on how much you're exposed to something, you can start thinking it's a really big problem to be outraged or scared about, even though it's not actually, statistically, a big problem. But it's just how much you're exposed to it. You might start thinking that it's way more frequent or likely to happen. Does that mean you just should not care at all about, you know, potential plane crashes? No! The whole reason that plane crashes are so rare is because it sparks such a an outrage if it does happen. Because getting on a plane, you're relinquishing all control. And I think that's why people don't like doing it. Like, that's where the, the fear of flying comes from. You're in a flipping metal can in the sky. It seems like it's against all laws of nature. And, uh... And you have no control over what happens. So it's like critically important that we give people some sort of reassurance to say like plane crashes are so rare that like the risk of dying in a plane crash is less than like literally any other mode of transportation that you could take including just walking Public transportation should be more of a norm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Base take. Is this guy ever going to drop the S-stock? This has been the longest grind we've done today. It feels like it's been about an hour just on this guy. Also, you don't look old? I'm Well, I'm going to be 36 this year. Relative for YouTube, I'm old. That's the thing. I'm not old. Like, I'm not old old. I'm just, but I'm too old to be doing this shit. <laughs> Too old to be on here talking to like 18 to 24 year olds and hello fellow kids, you know? I don't know what's cool anymore. I don't have any riz. See, I know what the kids say. I know how it goes. Skibbity toilet and all that. We looked into that on stream a couple days ago. Cause I didn't even understand what that was. And it's just as outlandish as I expected. Give me the S stock, dude. Just Give me the S-Stock. I swear to God. Does this- is it even in this guy's loot table? I'm look- it says one can be found immediately south of the Rampart side start of Grace. Oh my gosh. Just in time to watch the S-Stock grind. <laughs> We've gotten like 12 of these coats. You're telling me we've killed this guy probably a hundred times, right? It's it's been it's been a while. I've lost track because I was going off on something stupid, but like Revisiting something I said on a previous stream, though, you know, me challenging someone who wants to come in and, and say like, you know, woke gaming this and that. Me being like, no, that's stupid, you know, break down your opinion because I don't believe it, is possibly the worst way to change someone's mind. I understand that. It's still fun to argue about, but like, you know, here's how you actually change someone's mind. Here's how I would do it. Like, if I knew you in real life, and I was like growing concerned about, you know, something, this is not important enough for me to want to have to go through the mental and emotional grind to actually change someone's mind. But you have to be like, you're right, man. I'm with you. I understand. And not only do you have to, like, you can't just say that. You have to basically reformat what that person said to you in your own words. The key is you're building a level of trust so that you can tell that person, you could, you're reassuring them and validating them and saying, I understand why you feel this way. I'm not strawmanning you and saying that you're stupid. I'm outright saying what you're saying makes sense and I understand why you believe what you believe. If you can do that, which again, 
even if you if you don't agree with it, you still have to make them think you do. So in a way, it's very, very exhausting. But you do that, you build that sense of trust. And then and only then can you start planting the seeds of like, you start asking a few questions about it. You start introducing them to some other points of view, nothing too overt. And then slowly over time, they change their own mind. Is very, very, very challenging to do. Er, challenging in the sense that it's like tiring. It takes a very concerted effort. You can't just go to them and be like, look at these facts, look at these facts. You're wrong, look at these facts, because it's not gonna work. It just doesn't work. They'll just hit you with alternative facts, AKA non-truths, but it validates their opinion, therefore it's fact to them. That's just, it, it just doesn't work. Okay, I've done this successfully in the past with, I can think of maybe two or three instances, but it's like, it's really hard. You have to do it only at times when it's really worth it to you. That being said, it's still really fun to argue. Even if there's no point. In fact, those are the those are the most fun ones. Is when the stakes are low and there's no point. What was it, Subsorian who said? The 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 lord the the most minute lore details that people argue are the most important lore arguments. <laughs> I'm starting to think the s stock is not in this dude's loot table. I'm going to be honest with you. You look good in plaid? I do have some plaid shirts. Just not wearing them today. So long as the person you're talking to is genuine about their opinions, I am of the belief that most everyone is genuine about their opinions. No matter how outlandish they seem to you, everybody believes what they believe for a reason. In many ways, everybody who feels a certain way is logical in the sense that if you understand the origin of that belief and feeling, it will make sense. Like, nothing is, like, 100% illogical in the sense that you can't deduce the origin of it. That's my opinion. That doesn't mean that it's based in... It's based in logic. But you can f sort of track, like, based on what media they're exposed to, what their close peer group's beliefs are, what their family's beliefs are, who they spend the most time with's beliefs are. What sort of communities they spend time on online. You can, you can very clearly make a logical connection between what they believe, even if it's outlandish, and their life circumstances, 100%. Base drop rate's 0.5% at 100 discovery. Okay. I'll check, I, I'm not sure what my discovery is at, but it's, I think I've got to be close to 300. So it's not much better, but... What's funny is I got the Slender Sword. I got three of the Slender Swords. Oh, my discovery's 288. That's not as good as I expected. I don't know if there's anything that gives me discovery, unless I put more points in arc. I'm at, like, 63 Arcane. And then I've got the... And then I've got the Foul Feet. And I've got the Amulet. I don't think there's anything else that raises discovery. Sometimes people believe what they want to believe. Yeah, I know, but why do they want to believe it? <laughs> that's what I mean. That's what I'm, that's what I'm establishing. I think... I'm not, I'm, I'm not trying to think that I'm, like, different or, like, not... Um, I don't... It's not like I don't fall prey to this. But I'm pretty sure, like, most, if not all, of your beliefs have to do with finding some amount of congruency in the communities that you are a part of. 
most people will change their belief systems to fit in to where they're spending the most time in terms of other people. That, and what's and I think the internet has fundamentally changed that because it's changed how people engage with different communities. So you might change your beliefs based on a community that you have online versus a community in real life. And that's something that is new regarding the internet in the last 20 years that's never existed in human history before. I believe some people are beyond reach. Maybe not someone else's, but beyond mine. I agree with that, yeah. <laughs> Again, it's like... What's his name? Daryl, um... Basically, there's a, a black guy who would basically try to make friends with um, Ku Klux Klan members and would, like, de-radicalize them. And he had, like, a very specific system to do it. And it's very similar to what I've described. Um... So, like, it's possible, but, like, you have to... It takes a really concerted effort. And I think people maybe believe that somehow humans are, like, inherently truth-seeking machines. Like, if you just expose this person to some irrefutable truth, then they'll change their mind. And in my experience, especially in the last 10 to 15 years, that is absolutely not true. Absolutely not true. You, we, just ho we just wish it was true, but that is not true. Daryl Davis, yes, thank you. I choose to think for myself. I don't follow crowds for the sake of following crowds. I didn't say it's the crowds. It's the communities that you're involved with, your peer groups. Everybody thinks they think for themselves, but I guess my, what I'm positing is most people actually don't. In fact, I would argue everybody doesn't. Another topic we talked about in the past are, like, cults. People who end up in cults. Even people who do, like, horrible, terrible things in life. You know, terrorists, school shooters. If you can't have some level of introspection to examine how someone got to that point, and don't just hand it... You can't just be like, well, it's mental illness, period. If you can't understand how someone's emotional state could lead them to performing awful horrific actions like that then i think that's perhaps something worth exploring because i think that the capacity to do those things is in everybody and it's a scary thought that we don't like to think about And so it's worth understanding, like, what what were the predispositions of this person that led them to take these actions? Besides, their brain was broken. Which certainly plays a factor for a lot of things. But also, there's a lot of times you would look back and you would see entire societies partaking in horrible, egregious acts. Such as, you know, Rwandan genocide. Such as Holocaust. And you think, well, surely not every single one of these people had the same mental illness across every single one of them. No, they were deeply radicalized because they were in certain emotional states. They wanted to maintain some congruency with their peer group. So, like, the idea, I guess a good question to ask that I think is interesting to ask is, if you lived, if you lived in Nazi Germany in 1938-39, do you think you wouldn't be a Nazi? You think you would be the free thinker who was like, no, not me, mm -mm, this is wrong. And if you immediately think, absolutely not, I would never have been. I would have, I would have done what was right. I wouldn't have done that. I think that there's like a level of misunderstanding of human nature there that maybe is worth thinking about more. And that's what I mean when I say like, a lot of people aren't necessarily as free-thinking as they, as they think. Maybe about certain topics, but when it comes to fitting into your peer groups, really not much at all.
the, man the banality of evil. Yeah, that's one term I have heard regarding it for sure. But that's why things like struggle sessions in Maoist China um, were a thing. The whole idea is, and that's that's how these things happen. It's a it's a purposeful push from those in power to essentially be the thought police. And what you do is you publicly shame or kill or torture people who have different ideas than you. Because what you're doing, it's not so much the it's not so much being dissuaded by being killed. I mean, that's a big thing, right? You get people afraid. But they're afraid of, like, being hurt on an individual level, but they're hurt of being in an outgroup from their community. That is what keeps people in line when you do things, again, like, like struggle sessions to say, like, oh, this person was a, you know, a religious leader or something, and we're trying to push religion out. You get people in a crowd and you show that the majority of people are cheering as we as we humiliate this this person and we show like yes the public opinion is that this person is wrong and what that's doing is it's making everybody else internalize the fact that they they shouldn't be like that person and that is how you terminate free thought And I bet if you ask any one of those people who are in those crowds and cheering, they, they wouldn't say, yeah, of course, I'm, I'm just following the crowd. I'm a sheep. Nobody says that. Nobody believes that about themselves. But that's how you, that's how you build your opinions is through, ex, you know, peer acceptance, social congruency. Because, like, the idea of having some sort of moral framework in your life and, and core values that and you build every single opinion from is, like, too much work, frankly. <laughs> like, every person is not a philosopher who has nothing to do. And, like, as soon as you're hit with, a, like, a new, like, uh-oh, culture war thing, make up your mind, what's your opinion? Most of us are just absorbing the opinions of the groups that we're already affiliated with. Very rarely are we like, well, let me put this through a rigorous moral framework that I have constructed so that is super consistent with everything else I believe. A lot of, you just sort of take for granted. You're like, okay, well, it seems like the opinion that I should have on this is this. That's not what you think, because if you did think that, then you would be kind of disgusted with yourself. But what's happening in your brain is you think, we think, not you, we think, okay, what, what am I supposed to think about this? I think that's arguably the, oh, we got it. That's arguably the first thing that people are asking. Um... Not consciously, but your brain's doing it, is what am I supposed to believe about this? And I find that very interesting. For some reason, I thought that she sold things that weren't just um, spells, and maybe it's too late. Hopefully not. All right, let's go sell all the stuff that we've <laughs> gathered for so long, because now we have a ton of extra stuff we can ditch. Your own. 
It hurts to sell these extras. Oh, there's a low drop chance, but hey. What are you going to do? Okay, we have all the rapiers. Let's go ahead and sell our other stuff. I didn't count it, but it was 45 minutes. Yeesh. See you, Winters. Myself, I've always had a sense of not wanting to hurt others intentionally. Okay. Um, hypothetical. Someone's breaking your house and threatening your life. Would you hurt that person? Intentionally. The whole point is, if you're made to believe that someone is a threat to your existence. It's not just like, I th the whole point of like, these societies that commit genocide, the people they're committing genocide against are dehumanized to them. If you can, if someone can, if someone can be dehumanized to you, then yeah, you'll absolutely hurt them. No question, you, you, you will. Because you're saying, I won't hurt another human, but this person isn't human to you anymore. So yes, you you would you would do terrible, disgusting things to them. Proven through history as we've seen societies do these things. And the best way to... to be cognizant of this is be aware of the potential of this to happen. If we know that this is something that could happen, that's how we stop ourselves. We pump the brakes and say, hey, wait a minute. It really feels like we're dehumanizing these types of people. We should be very careful because what comes next? I don't know. Maybe it's cynical of me to say. I just think that that capacity is within everybody. Somewhere in there. And we, we should be thankful that we don't feel it right now. But it's in there. And it's better to be aware of it than not. Because then you're less likely to fall victim to it. Okay, great. Okay, rapiers, done. Thrusting swords, I should say, done. Heavy thrusting swords. There's only four, and one of them requires us to kill Plusidusex and use his soul. So, those are done. Curved swords. Bit of a larger group here. You can't compare someone breaking into your home and defending yourself versus genocide of a group of people as a whole. Again, I guess I can only ask, like, why, why do you think that people... Why do you think the Hutus allowed themselves to kill genocide the Tutsis? You think every... Like, what was it about those people? What did they think about the Hutus that allowed them to do that? In their mind, it was the same idea. These people were a threat to their existence. They hated them. They dehumanized them. That is what allowed them to murder them. It's not an exact one-to-one -one comparison, but the whole point is, if you think that you are just not capable of hurting people, there's there's always... You're, I, you can give you a million hypothetical examples of situations where you probably would find it justified to hurt somebody. It's not good, but it's definitely there. Scimitar. Falchion, Shemshir, Gross Messer. Oh, I remember that one. Bandit's Curved Sword, Shotel, Scavenger's Curved Sword, Mantis Blade, Flowing... Oh, Beastman's Curved Sword we can't get yet. Flowing Curved Sword. Sword. 
Serpent God's Curved Sword, Magma Blade, ugh. Nox Flowing Sword we have, Wing of Estelle we have, Eclipse Shotel. Okay, so we need Magma Blade and Gross Messer. So let's do Gross Messer first. Possible drop from skeletons that wield the weapon. The weapon can be dropped by skeletons in Tombsward Catacombs. The skeletons that may drop a Gross Messer do not use a shield or a bow and can be recognized by their rolling move. Elden Ring Best Gross Messer Farm. You know how many Germans were killed for hiding Jews? Not as many as that were killing Jews or, or were allowing it to happen. You're talking about something that's a statistical rarity. Rwandan genocide is too old of a reference? Why? Tombsword. Nobody remembers the 90s besides old men. Oh, you're saying it's not it's not good to make a point with. I thought you meant like you literally can't use that as an example because it's not like like it's not like topical. <laughs> I gotcha. I was like, whoa, whoa, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> That's the sword we want, right there. I think even flipping Jordan Peterson, of all people, a guy who I think is, like, in terms of psychology, you know, pretty um, prescient, but, like, gets way too involved in a bunch of topics he doesn't know anything about and comes off as a bit of a lunatic. But, in ter like, in terms of, like, the psychology thing, I think he talked about this exact thing. He t I think he was talking about school shooters, and he's like, if you can't see that darkness in yourself, like, if you can't understand the capacity of someone to do this, then, like, you got to be really careful, because that's, like, that makes you vulnerable to to it, you know? Like, it's you got you to gotta understand why people could possibly do this. Like what's the what's the real reason? Like what 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 are those steps that are taken to get someone to a point where they could perform a school shooting? Scary stuff. Jordan Peterson's like Noam Chomsky worse because he's Canadian. <laughs> I think I mean I th I just think he's he's a great example of someone who has been driven off the deep end because of the amount of hate that he's nice received. Um, like I I think he's makes some great points. I mean honestly, it's it, like the meme is like clean your room. Like it's true though. Like just like get your shit together, pick up after yourself, get into good better routines, and like give a shit about your living space. Like this is great advice. It's true. But then as soon as he starts getting involved in more culture war type stuff, that's when you start seeing a little more. Um... I just wouldn't. I wouldn't listen to him for anything outside of his area of specialty. And I think that's true for a lot of people. I think the same thing about Elon Musk. Like, either Elon Musk is incredible and, like, a cool person, or he's the dumbest man imaginable. And I think it's probably somewhere in the middle where he has an area of specialty where he's introducing certain products to the world that are cutting edge. We can acknowledge that, but every other thing he tries to insert himself into, he's just the dumbest peanut gallery insertion possible. It would be like if I was 
trying to like I can talk about it here on stream but if I was like mega wealthy and everyone was listening to what I was saying trying to insert myself into areas that were not my specialty you just come off as extremely stupid uh oh it's magma blade time oh no Oh, no. Okay. All right. This... This farm can be very rough. We'll see if anything quite beats the, um... The amount of farm that we had with the... Nobles s -doc. That one was... Woof. Got to remember to send the elevator back, back down every time as well. We need more billionaire UFC matches. <laughs> yeah, because then at least one of them will get the shit kicked out of them. <laughs> Okay, there's two things to farm here. One is the Black Dumpling, which is a very rare helm that this guy drops. And then one is the Magma Sword, which is dropped by these um, by these snakes. And both are incredibly rare, so we might be here for a bit of time. We might even have to leave in order to get... In fact, I'm pretty confident we'd have to leave in order to get, um... More foul feet. I feel like you would enjoy RuneScape. You grind, but number goes burst, so it makes your brain produce dopamine. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> it's not a good thing to... It's not, you know, you know what I mean? Like, I enjoy it, and you're right. But, like, I also know there's a part of me where I'm like, you gotta stop. <laughs> also, I feel like I'm probably coming off a little more aggressive today with some of these with some of these rants. I apologize, but also, again, as I get a little older, I like, I just don't care as much. <laughs> oh. Okay, the shield, that's fine. Do I just want to leave the elevator up and take it back so that I don't have to use as many foul feet? That would make this grind take longer, but we would have to grind for less foul feet. I, mm, I actually don't think that's the way to go. I think we just warp back and we just farm more foul feet later. But yeah, unlike my some of my other rants where I probably come across as like, hey idiot, I'm not trying to do that here. I'm just trying I just think that these are interesting topics and trying to pose interesting and unique ways to approach them and think about them. Did I send the elevator back down? I have to remember to do that every time. Okay. An arcane build for farming. My arcane, I think, is at like 68. So, like, it could be a little better, but in the grand scheme of item find, I have max item find through all other sources, so I'm pretty comfortable with this. Oh, I wasn't implying that you were in your teens, Whirlpool. I was just saying that me personally, as I've gotten older, this is how I, my, I have felt. Maybe we do want to just take the elevator back down. Get off 
of my opinion. <laughs> 324 is the max. I think I have 285. I'm not actually sure where to get more. Well, what is it without the foul foot? 239 with the foul foot, it's 285. Hmm. That thing has a chance to drop Albernag blood clots too, so don't get too excited if you see it drop something. I'd feel really stupid if there was something else that I could get that would increase my item find. <laughs> My viewership being teens into I actually don't think many teenagers watch this. <laughs> I would be surprised, actually, if I had a, a large, like, 17 to 20 group. I don't have enough punchy material for the, for the youngins. Not enough Tide Pods. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, hang on. Let's take the elevator back down. Now, yeah, but I, I appreciate the, uh, the diversity of age, but also opinions. Unfortunately, I guess, or fortunately, I'm the one with the microphone. <laughs> but I still enjoy engaging with everybody. Get a lot of those. I think this one... I think this one's got maybe like a 0.5... This one might be another 0.5 drop rate. And it's not nearly as fast to farm as the S-Stock, unfortunately. Yeah, this is a bit long. I think we just are going to need to farm a lot of Foul Feet. Or we just don't use Foul Feet, which I don't love... Again, it's one of those where it's like, is it worth the extra time to farm a bunch of foul feet? How much time would that save us realistically in terms of, you know, probabilistically speaking, regarding these items that we're trying to get here? Versus the amount of time it would take to farm without. Twenty-five plus are boomers, according to the internet. Right. I've I have some friends too that that like they've talked about their kind of their concern of turning um turning thirty. I don't know. I I felt like I never really had that anxiety about getting older. I feel like it probably comes more with like health related stuff. Like now I'm almost thirty-six and like I'm not in bad health, but like there's definitely more noticeable health-related things now in my life than there were 10 years ago. And I think that's what kind of makes me feel older. And that's only going to get worse <laughs> as you get older. But that's another reason why I say, like, re like for YouTube, I am old. Is like, I'm not old in terms of age in a general sense I'm old in terms of age for like a YouTube content creator you said you were too old doing this what makes you say that um, I think it's just what appeals to the largest audience on YouTube the majority of viewers on YouTube are between 13 and probably 24. That's probably the largest age range on YouTube. Then you've, you know, it, it decreases as you increase the age range. So as I get farther and farther away from that, I'm able to engage less and less with the prime group. Unless maybe if I did this full time, I, you know, could figure it out a little bit better. 
Oh my gosh. I don't think I've ever seen that move. That was cool as heck, dude. That was like actually cool. Holy shit. How do I get that move? Just sort of like keeping up with the, the, I mean, not like language literally, but like the language of earlier generations and also the language of YouTube. Like that what you need to pop off on YouTube is different than it was five, ten years ago. Like what makes for something that pops on YouTube is vastly different and he's evolved a lot. And it's, it's actually become very scientific and... The effort required to make that work is just kind of beyond my purview at this point. That's not really age-related, but it does make me feel like I'm like part of the old guard, you know? Like, to make like really good appealing thumbnails is both really simple and really complicated. And at the end of the day, it's time-consuming. So like... At a certain point, I just have to find a formula that I feel comfortable doing it and just being like, well, this is as much effort as I'm willing to put in or I have time to put in for, and that's that's that. And to me, that feel that's, that's what makes me feel old. Because <laughs> I don't have time to do anything else. It's just, and it's not, it's not really financially viable. It doesn't really add to the fun factor for me for doing this. The young man, I feel like, would be a lot more uh, engaged on that front. But instead, yeah, we're here grinding in this RPG, you know, for like 10, 15 people for weeks and weeks. And I'm having a great time. Some people would come in and be like, oh, 11 viewers, fucking kill me. I'd rather be dead than be stuck with only 11 viewers. Like, I, dude, I'm having a blast. <laughs> Y'all are great. It's kind of like what I said in the, in my, like, I am old video, is, like, in terms of, like, feeling old, it has a lot more to do with, the way I've described it is, like, you, like, stuff on your plate. I feel like stuff doesn't really come off my plate anymore. It's not like I complete tasks and it, like, clears my plate. Now I just, it, like, it only gets added to. That's just, like, where I'm at in life. I think that's, you know, and in terms of, like, health, diet, fitness, like, there's only so much you can do with the time you have. And so I think that's what leads to a lot of people who are like, oh man, I'm feeling kind of downtrodden. It's like, well, you sleep less than six hours a night, you eat like shit, you smoke cigarettes, you drink a lot, like, that's... Thankfully, I've never really been much into substances, both illegal or illegal, and, um... I think that has had a really positive impact on my health. But usually it's when you're in your 30s that that shit really starts catching up to you. And also, you're at the point in your life where it's much more habitual. So it's a lot harder to break that habit than it is to not start it in the first place. And also kind of the, the realization as I get older too, like the, the getting out of bed, just, just straight up getting out of bed. I'm always, I've always been a, a, mostly a night owl. My parents have always said, oh, as you get older and you get used to uh, getting up early for work and that type of schedule, um, you'll get used to it. I've never, ever gotten used to it. Not once. And I sleep, I definitely sleep between seven, eight hours each night, or I try to. That try to, I guess, is doing some heavy lifting. But for real, like, generally I'm getting a good amount of sleep every night. And, um, I still, I wake up and I'm laying in bed and it's just like the energy it takes to just get up is, it just feels like a lot. And I've, I'm learning too, like, that's probably as much mental as it is physical in many ways. And as, like, the plate stays full and not much is coming off of it... 
that feeling of like, okay, another day, got to revisit the stuff that we can try and get off the plate just so that it doesn't get overloaded because more is coming in all the time. It's always something coming in. Got to be concerned about your health. Got to be concerned about what you eat. Got to be concerned about your bills. Got to be concerned about your job. Got to be concerned about your family. And I, I don't mean like, of course you're concerned about your family. Of course you're concerned about your bills, but like it's the minutia of it. Which only increases the older you get. Like, oh, my cable provider, they just jacked up, they they stealth increased my rates every year. I gotta, now I gotta call them and I gotta jockey with them and try and pretend like I'm willing to change to a different service so that they won't raise my bill. Because over the course of a year, that shit adds up. Gotta do that. It's just like constant notifications of things you've got to check on and make sure aren't going to like fuck you in some unexpected way. Just a lot, man. Only gets more and more as you have a family, as your parents get older and have worse health. As you get older and your old friend groups go their separate ways and you try to make new friends and you know, building and maintaining new friendships. That's a lot more work than it is when you're younger and you just happen to be in flipping school or in a new job where people are your age or around your age. It's the easiest way to make friends. You're just like forced into positions for your entire early life where you're around people that are your age. When that goes away, most people are totally lost when it comes to making friends. And they think, man, all my other friends, we all kind of drifted apart. We all got busy as we got older. We all just have so much work to do. And then you realize, like, oh, now I just have no friends. How do I make new friends? And the answer is, it takes a lot of effort. It takes concerted effort to do. And there's the constant fear of rejection, which is not just regarding dating. It just has to do with meeting people in general. So people don't do it. And less and less are we interacting with people in real life, which is another reason why I think the amount of sex that young people are having has gone down substantially. Is because we can stay at home and feel comfy talking to people that we feel like sort of tick our mental boxes because we can self-select a lot easier when we meet people online. But in real life, I feel like you might meet someone who on paper, you might think, oh, I don't agree with this person's opinions. I don't like the way this person looks. I don't, I wouldn't get along with this person. But if you're forced to interact with them daily in real life because they're in one of your classes or they're at your workplace, I feel like most people find ways to get along and become friends with people that are pretty different from themselves, where if they had total control over it, they would not have accepted that person in the first place. Which is a big problem with online dating as well. There's way too much choice to, like, self-select yourself out or select others out, when if you were just, like, meeting them in real life, you would probably have a totally different interaction. That's another reason why I feel old. <laughs> So I can't, I can't really relate too much to that. Like, the online dating just seems like a nightmare to me. But that's, like, it's taking over a larger and larger portion of the market share of how spouses and significant others are meeting. I'm just like, oh, God, why? Just, like, go outside and try and meet some people through, like, a a sport or, like, I don't know, like, meeting through friends. Like, that's how the majority of people previously met was at work or, like, through friends at university, at high school, like that's just like, but now you're like, well, if I go on this dating app, like think of all the different options I have now. And it's like, well, he's, he's 5'11", she makes too much money. He makes too much money. He makes too little money. He has red hair. She has, I don't know, a face that's not perfectly symmetric and so like you select all these people out when if you just met them in real life and your pool as it were were just smaller then you fucking ha you have more realistic options you just have way more realistic options My blankie is too cozy to get up. Based and true. I 
I just, I think people having too many options overinflates their sense of self-worth in an unhealthy way as well. <laughs> Similar to the conversation, I think, two streams ago, maybe three, where I was talking about how, like, people are able to get validation for their wacky opinions online, no matter how outlandish they are. Because as long as there's one person out there that you can communicate with across the world who believes similar, then, like, you'll never sort of shake out of it. Which, I think, in the past, pre-internet, was something that happened that was healthy. And now it's like, well, you know, I'm 18 and I have a stupid opinion, and I'm just going to hold that for my entire life because no one ever... <laughs> I never got the impression that it was something I probably needed to get over. <laughs> uh, that's a really... Deme there we go. That's a really demeaning way to um, to talk about that. But it's true. I said this before. Like, when you're young, like, that's when you're supposed to have new, fresh, passionate ideas. It's good to challenge the norm. It's especially, that's, like, what you're supposed to do. And then you get older, and it's not so much that you become more correct, but you become a little more practical. You have less time to be as passionate about stuff. You can be, I you can be idealistic, but, like, it's just less... Less availability to, to do so. And you're exposed to a lot more attempts to try, and you realize, like, okay, there were reasons why this didn't work, and that didn't work, and this didn't work. You become more practical and a little less idealistic. And I guess what I'm trying to say is, being super passionate and not, and not practical is not necessarily wrong. Nor is being super practical to the point where you were stymieing creative critical thought that's also wrong. So, I'm just saying, like, I think these different brackets of thought that tend to align more or less with age ranges um, are both important and good. <laughs> but there's something that happens when you're a little younger, when you have these, where, again, you sort of are exposed to, like, oh, I have this great, I, I know, this is the, if all we need to do is this thing, it'll fix, it'll fix these problems. And then... As you get older, you kind of get exposed to, like, the times that those things were tried in some way, and then you learn maybe why they failed or didn't work out the way you thought, or there were unintended consequences, and that sort of starts to shift your thought. Instead, it feels like what happens is people get stuck in these patterns of, of thought from when they're younger, and they never really move into the new, the new age, for lack of a better term. <laughs> Because I couldn't possibly be wrong. I have so many people that agree with me. Across the internet. Therefore, I'm never forced to sort of re-examine my ideas. I would rather spend time alone than with other people. That's, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I think I spent a lot of my 20s that way. And then again, I, I kind of had a realization where I was like, ooh, I probably should really make an effort here. Like, I should call my parents more. I should have a better relationship with my sister. I should make new friends, because like, I'm still friends with my old friends, but we all live in different places, and it's hard to keep in, hard to keep in contact. And so, I think it was around when I was 30, maybe 31, where I started making a really concerted effort to be better with that. But then recently, I've also been really busy at work. I'm getting a I'm getting a promotion, which is awesome. I'm really engaged at work, which is a privilege to be like, wow, I actually feel like pretty fulfilled at my nine to five office job. So I'm like very appreciative of that because I'm doing something that really stimulates my brain. That's that's very important to me. And um, on that note, um, as I'm busier there now, I have less time to kind of be considerate of like, oh, I should. Make sure I'm planning stuff with my friends and, you know, calling my family more and more. It's just like, because you're just so tired. You get home and you just don't, you kind of like run short on that mental bandwidth. And then you're like, well, I got to make something for dinner. You know, I got to do, do some exercising. I got to like do all these important things. I got to worry about this random errands or keeping up with the cable, you know, the internet bill that I now have to call. Or the, you know, the irrigation system, blah, blah, blah. Or the... Gotta mow the lawn, or I gotta trim these hedges that have been overgrown for too long, or, you know, it's just always something that's in the back of my brain where it's like, you know, I can only do so much every day, and now I have to 
sort of trim the list as best I can. And then stuff just sort of naturally gets deprioritized. De and one of those might be like, oh, I should, I should just text my friends and see how they're doing. I should just like reach out and just be like, hey, how's it going? Let's plan, let's, let's put something on the calendar and for next week or the, the week after. And for me personally, as someone who, again, I, I spent a lot of my adult life being shying away from those types of interactions. So now those kind of automatically and subconsciously get deprioritized in my brain. And I've, I've tried to make a conscious effort to undo that a little bit, but it's hard. It's hard to. There's a period of time I was less busy. Wasn't as engaged at work. I, you know, I was doing work, but it just wasn't, like, super stimulating for me. And then, like, that was a lot easier to be like, oh, you know, let's make plans with friends. Magma sword. At least there's two of these dudes right here. But now I have to go farm more foul feet. Yep. Okay. Time for some foul feet. I find those who try to fix the world in most cases have yet to figure out how to fix their own lives first. Exactly. But that's what I mean. When you're young, that's that's the point where it's like, hey, like, you got to figure your own shit out before you're starting to think that you can, like, completely fix the world. Um, but again, that's like the age to do it. I don't know. That's what I mean. Like, it's more acceptable, I feel like, if you're doing it at that age. In my, uh, in my opinion. Hang on. Okay, so you can only use barrage on a short bow. All right, fine. We'll use the short bow. No, no, no. You see, the solution to my life's problems is to fix the world. Right, that, yeah, that's probably how folks feel about it. I don't know. I guess my point is, like, I don't want to be the old person who tries to shut young people down just by being like, you don't get it, you're young. Like, I'm, I'm just trying to be kind of... I'm trying to be reasonable with it and be like, when you're young, like, it's cool that you have these ideas that you want to help people with. I think that's great. And then eventually you get to a point where, like, maybe some stuff works and you'll hit gold with your ideas, and then eventually you get to a point where you're like, okay... I've done what I can. Time to fix my own shit. <laughs> I don't know. It's just too easy as you get older to be like, oh, these young people, they're just stupid. They don't get it. And it's like, well, I think there have been plenty of young people in the past who have led to, who have had radical ideas that have like legitimately changed the world. We shouldn't dissuade that, if it's a good idea. And they're not just like, hey, let's kill a bunch of people, you know? So I guess I just, I try not to like dissuade or, or like push back against people's opinions based on the age of the person making the opinion per se. I mean, you can, but like, yeah, I would try, I would generally try to avoid that. Or at the very least, like you can, you can see the positives in their way of thinking while still pushing back. It's just like all too often you see like people completely discounted, like, ah, you're young, you don't get it. And it's like, well, yeah, you're young and you don't get it, but like this you might be onto something with this. You know what I mean? Like, 
It's okay. It's okay to, to do that. You can give in. Do you plan to farm all items for the DLC once it's out? Absolutely! Though, um, I have no idea. You know, we, we, ha we have to know what the scope is. We don't know yet what the scope of the DLC is going to be. So I can't really do a farm. Nobody can really do a farm until there's sort of some community action to get a comprehensive list together. Maybe I can try to be part of that, but other people will do it way faster, I think, than me. I'm not going to be able to play the game enough as much as people who would put together something on the wiki. Are we having fun yet? Farming foul feet? I have to be a l well do we want to get closer to these over here or is it better to be closer to these over here farming so you can farm something else easier yep exactly so I was kind of discussing earlier I'm like at a certain point you got to think like is the time doing this going to be worth it to save time doing the rest of the farming and I think the answer is yes in a bit of a broader scope, it's just hard to quantify that, to really justify, because like this, to me, this is probably the most boring thing to do, but it must be done, so that's what we're doing. I have ideas like my friend should be able to live safely, which kind of requires world change. Absolutely. That's the kind of shit where it's like, no matter how old you get, you know, you can't, there's some things where like, it's not about practicality anymore. There's some things, some things that just really should happen. And unfortunately, like, using American as, a, as an example, there's plenty of things in America that most Americans agree on, and yet do not become legislation. When I say most, I don't just mean, like, 51%. I'm talking, like, a solid... Plurality, like 60, well, plurality is not the right word, supermajority, like 60, 60 or 66 percent plus. And yet, no movement. Frustrating. It sucks how long it can take to change things. Yes, it's also interesting, too, when you put into perspective how there are things that have changed in the past incredibly quickly. And it's, like, it's sad to think, like, have we, like, just gone... Are we, like, is that a bygone era where that's just, like, not possible anymore? That's very frustrating to me.
I think things changing too quickly can be very scary for some people. It depends on what it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you want to take action to increase public safety in some way for a certain group of people or for everyone. Like, that's easy. It just feels like everyone agrees on that. And it's those types of things where it's like, why can't we just, like, do this? Why can't we just do this? It seems like it should be easy. But when it comes to something maybe that for some people seems kind of intuitive or obvious, but isn't so much like a clear and present danger, then I think there is some merit in being like, well, hang on, let's make sure we examine all the potential consequences for this and also review kind of the positives of our current system before we change something. Like I, for one, would be in favor of ranked choice voting. I don't know if that's something where like, oh, I'm in, I'm, I'm emperor of the country with unlimited power for one day. I'm going to implement this thing. I don't know if that would be on my list, you know? But it also has to do with how you frame it. I, I think I brought this one up in the past where it's like, when you ask people if they're in favor of a Medicare for all system, it's something like, it's something wild, like 70% of people are in favor of it. It might be more, I, I, I actually don't know, but it's, it's high. There's a clear majority that would be in favor of Medicare for all as an option. But as soon as you say, are you in favor of discarding private health insurance such that Medicare for all becomes your only option, then it plummets to like 13%. So it all has to do with these, these minutia, which is what, I mean, that's not really minutia, but it's just something more specific. And then as you get into more minutia, then it becomes more contentious. So that's why it's so hard to get something like that changed because people can agree broadly on what we, we want a public option. We want one. There's massive problems with private health insurance in the U.S. and not having a public option. And we were very, very close to having one, too. Joe fucking Lieberman. Look, rest in peace. He recently passed. But he was responsible for there not being a public option. Anyway, um... Again, there's certain things where you're like, oh, well, this concept is very easy to agree on. And then it's like, okay, well, how do we implement it fairly? How do we implement it more specifically? That's when it's like, well, we don't have answers for that. And it becomes really complicated. And now it takes forever to figure out. But the really frustrating ones are the ones where it's like, look, we all agree on this. And it's not something that has a lot of minutia to it. Just do it. <laughs> like, just write the legislation and do it. Oh, my gosh. People want choice. Yeah, exactly. I mean, from a healthcare perspective, too, like when we compare ourselves to like Scandinavia, the thing is, there's still private, there's still private health insurance in those companies. That's why it's like, it's crazy. Like it's presented as like, we need private, private insurance needs to go away. And it's like, well, hang on. Plenty of, plenty of countries that have, you know, taxes to fund what is essentially mandatory health insurance and healthcare that's provided for everybody still have private insurance options where you can supplement your plan. I don't know why it's not marketed like that. Like at the end of the day, people just, like they just want the option. Like if I can get a public option, you know, I maybe only work 36 hours a week because my employer doesn't want to give me full time because then they'd have to pay for health insurance. Okay, well, give me the option to get some health insurance at a reasonable cost via a public option. 
because buying it privately as on a single payer plan, not a single payer plan, but on a on a individual plan through private health insurance is unconscionably expensive. That's the whole like the whole point. The fact that you have employers who are incentivized to schedule an employee for 39 hours and not 40 just so they don't have to consider them full time to provide health insurance is like that's just like straight dystopian like just straight up dystopian now i don't know how informed i am on this i may be i don't know there may be some legality around the ability to do that or like you know companies are punished heavily for doing that i i don't know so i, I don't want to get too I don't want to be too pushy on this specific thing where I might not just be well-versed enough on it. But, uh... Like, again, what's what's the harm in providing a competitive public option? Something that, if it is competitive, by definition, it would, it would pay for itself. It's not costing... Just, you know, being that young person in the past, I was working at Flippin' CVS Pharmacy, and I didn't have health insurance. That, um... It was a very difficult time in my life. The thing is, like, I was young, so, like, I didn't need... comprehensive coverage. It was more for, like, accidents. It wasn't for, like, chronic conditions. And that's... I mean, that's part of the issue, is you have people who... They think they... they if the cost of having the choice is too high or really like exists at all then they don't want the choice because they're like well i don't need to use this so i don't want to pay for it but the whole point of insurance is hedging for things that aren't necessarily going to happen you don't know that's the point and i think people maybe put a little too much stock in their own health and it's not until you're faced with a massive bill when you realize like well shit i wish I had some better coverage here. Maybe I should have just been paying that premium for the last 10 years and I would be covered right now and it would be fine. But people don't think, not not everyone, but some people don't think long term like that. So they just think, well, it's my health. I can manage it just fine. I don't need health insurance. So why should I have to pay for it? But then when they get sick and they go to the hospital, you best believe that cost is getting passed on to someone, the rest of us. Those of us who are paying premiums are paying for people to go to the hospital who don't have insurance. And are that's like that's why the negotiated rates between insurance and hospitals is so absurd. The difference comes from the you know, the real cost of the procedure for one person. Like it's 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 really just supply and demand, right? You have a certain number of people who are going to get a certain service, but only a certain number of those people can afford to pay for it at like what should be considered the normal cost. If you have 70% of the people who would pay at the normal cost and 30% who can't afford it at all, then the price for that 70% goes up because that's just, that's the cost of doing business across the board for the hospital. So they negotiate these absurd rates with insurance companies, which effectively bundles in all these people who are getting these services that don't pay for them aren't insured and then end up going to the hospital because they didn't have any preventative care that co that's how that cost pa gets passed off to other consumers so like i feel like there should be more of a concerted outrage around that and that's why it's important that everybody has access to or is even mandatory to have health insurance because that is a that is a public cost it is essentially a tax but it is not managed directly through the government it's like a social tax that we pay. Your private insurance costs more because there are people who don't have access to or simply refuse to get insurance. How do places with socialized health care? Most. Most countries, honestly. How do they deal with this? Well, health care is provided through the state with generally an option to subsidize it with private health insurance. It just, it just, it's one of those things, again, the concept seems so easy, but implementing it 
for a country the size of the US where costs are so bloated and out of sorts, like how do you reset that? It's like we're at a point, we're like the Dark Souls universe where the, the fire has been artificially kept lit for so long that it's starting to distort reality to the point where any sort of pendulum swing in the other direction begins to feel impossible. Let's see how many we have after this run. Been going on a good rant here. It's been solid. Very happy with it. I remember when Medicare for All was like a, a hot issue um, where we thought like there's a chance maybe in the next election if we get someone like Bernie and like maybe um, we'll actually maybe we'll actually like get this. And I think that there just there was a concerted effort kind of pushing back against it. And I think there wasn't enough push on this idea like you realize like, yeah, your taxes will go up, but you won't be paying a health care premium through your through your um, your payroll deductions anymore. Like, it offsets in that way. It, it might be cheaper. Like, I, I don't think there was enough emphasis on that at the time. Hey, oppressed gamer. Okay, back to this stupid bullshit. All right, Magma Sword. Let's get that Magma Sword. No hugely long grind. No hugely long grind. We don't need the hugely long grind. We're doing great. Everything's looking good. The only huge grind we had was the S stock. But all things considered, this has been this has been pretty good. Can't wait for the giant envoy hammer. I was thinking maybe we do that next, but I'm just going to stick to the list. We're just going to go in order. I'm afraid that this magma sword is going to take a long time. This is not this is not a good one, man. This is not a good one. Imagine living in a country where lawmakers are accountable to voters. The problem is, here they are. But people still keep voting them in. <laughs> They're not doing what we want. They, they, like, if they don't do what you want, then, like, there's not enough of a backlash for enough people to vote them out. Why? <laughs> No, I had the other two envoy hammers, but the giant one, yep, we're gonna be we're gonna be doing that one. We're gonna be doing that one alright. Honestly, the magma sword, the giant envoy hammer, and then maybe the the octopus head. Those are probably the last three substantially obnoxious farms. The rest are all fairly straightforward with an easy way to 
to farm them. Yeah, well, yeah, I guess it's it's more like there aren't many options, I understand, in terms of people. But, like, how do we get more options? We need more people engaged who are willing to go into these positions. There's really just not enough incentive. I feel like it it's attracting people who are the least likely to actually deliver on a lot of this stuff. Because it's kind of a thankless... <laughs> it's kind of a thankless position in many ways. And the only people who want it are for the sake of, like, some sort of nebulous, you know, influence and power. A lot of people, it's like, hey, I just want to, like, live my best life. I'm going to stay in the private sector. Party system in general, yeah. It's, well, that's why I was mentioned ranked choice voting earlier, but also, um, I mean, the party system is not without the ability to be changed. I mean, if you look at the Republican Party this year, I mean, it's completely fractured. Like, they all are still considered Republicans, I guess, but, like, you've got, like, 60 or 70 percent of that party who are 100 percent Trump, and then you have 30, 40 percent of that party that is... 100% not Trump. So, like, really the only risk that Democrats have at losing is just because Joe Biden is so old that he's off-putting in that way to a lot of Democrats. But the Republican Party is so split that if there was literally any candidate against them, they can't coalesce their party enough to actually get the votes they need to vote on their own guy. And he already lost. So it's like... It, it, I mean, like, the problem is because the Democratic candidate is so easy to critique because of his age at this point, it makes it seem like there's a chance. And there very well might be. But, again, against any other opponent, the Republican Party would be, like, completely stripped bare after this election cycle to show, like, hey, you, you're, like, split right down the middle with this. Like, that's, you can't win an election that way. So in that way, I think it does kind of expose that, like, you can have party fractures. You can you can break away from this two-party system when there's, like, you have one party that's trying to have way too big of an umbrella. And you have people who branch out from that. And I think that this election cycle would be, it could be, a great example of that. Except for the fact that, again, we're, there's a, the, the opposing candidate is, is fairly weak. Hey, Senchua. The return of the wigs. Get uh, get Teddy Roosevelt back in here. What Didn't he make it his own party? I mean, yeah, it was like... I guess it was the, what, the 60s? Where there was a, a party... No, it was before that. There was a party flip. Like, straight up. Like, they, call, they were called the same things, but, like, Southern strategy totally changed the makeup of the political landscape of the country. So, like, it's possible, but we also live in a totally new age with how information is disseminated, so it's hard to see it changing very much. Whereas, like, in the past, like, look, like, look at 08. Obama won, like, fucking Iowa. And he won, uh, didn't he win Missouri? Clinton, I may, either Clinton or Obama won Missouri, and, and Obama won Iowa. I mean, Biden won Georgia. So it's like, it, it there are... <clears throat> there are weird shifts that can happen 
that it, it's not just like set in stone where every state will go the same way except for a, a small handful. If you have the right candidate, you absolutely can flip states that seem unflippable. Like, yeah, this upcoming election, I understand, like, nobody's really th thrilled with either candidate, but, like, you have the same two candidates. One has already won and one has already lost. They have both aged the same amount since the last election. It's just really hard for me to see how, why that would shift. It's absolutely possible. I'm not going to, I'm not going to write it off and close my eyes to it like 2016 people, we all, we all did. But, like... Not to mention that party is way, 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 way more fractured than it was. A junta. Did I just stumble into a rant? Absolutely. We've been ranting for a while, though. This is just, it's a grinding stream, so what else is there to do except a rant? Oh, wait. Oh, no. That wasn't the real one. Hey! Wait, I'll help. Oh, I was going to kill the snail for him. Biden is old, but isn't Trump only four years younger? Yeah, exactly. It's not like... <laughs> And that's, but that's also what I mean when I say, like, they've both aged the same amount since the last election as well. So, I, I don't know. It's just, I understand nobody's really thrilled with either's candidates, but I feel like it hasn't been since 08 Obama where anybody was thrilled with any candidate. So, like, I, I get it. But also, yeah, we're just like in a new, we're in a different age with how people engage with politics. I think since 2016, a lot of, a lot more people have become engaged from both angles and it's become much more establishment versus anti-establishment as opposed to Democrat Republican. From my perspective, I think that's become a lot clearer. Um, but then also I think like COVID and like, 2020 and then 2021 like legitimately broke people's brains in an unsalvageable way um, in that anti-establishment vector so we're just we're just in a totally different place I try not to be too cynical about it. Realistically, a lot of stuff at your local and state level are going to impact you more. It de I mean, that obviously depends. That's not a 100% across-the-board statement. But I think a lot of people tend to only get engaged at a federal level. They only will vote during presidential elections. When, again, there's a lot of local races that impact you substantially. Not to mention, again, you have to ask yourself, who are the people who are willing to run for these, like, more obscure local elections? Why not you? <laughs> and I'm not saying, I'm not saying that in the sense, like, yes, do it, 100% do it, but, like, it's worth asking, like, hey, you know, is there a reason? Like, what is it where I feel like I don't want to do this? And you think, like, oh, that's probably how most people think. Okay, well, what's different about the people that do do it? 
and maybe examining that, we kind of imagine like, oh, well, maybe that's a reason why someone like me, the normal folk, should should try and enter that arena. Because otherwise we're just leaving it to these MFers who maybe are getting in there for the wrong reasons. I don't know. But this, of course, only matters if you're in a relatively stable democracy of some sort. Come on. Ours will show up to vote for Trump regardless of how, how much they hate them. I agree. <laughs> Though, I do think that that party has lost voters straight up. Like, I know people that are my parents' age that are 100% never Trumpers. And I think that number only continues to grow. But I know what you mean, like, Democrats have purity tests and Republicans fall in line every time. Um, but I don't know, we've seen, we've seen that break happen and start to happen here. Like, in 2016, they had both houses of Congress in the presidency and they passed virtually nothing. They passed, they passed tax cuts, which were not offset by revenue. Um, or were not offset by spending cuts, I should say. And that, that was kind of like the only major accomplishment. So, like, give people something to vote for. Instead, it feels like it's all outrage and no substance at this point. But outrage is what gets people engaged. It get what's what get, gets people loud. It's what gets people to the polls, which is frustrating. Because as much people, as much as people say that they care about the economy, they probably are. <laughs> I just think that's a look straight up. It's a fucking lie. Like people do care about the economy, but it's not like people are starving to death. All right, there's some food insecurity in places that that needs addressed. But in reality, when people say they care about the economy, odds are they've been whipped into a frenzy regarding some nonsense like CRT or a legitimate issue like the border, but rather than actually solving it, it becomes an electoral issue. And suddenly that becomes, again, like you're whipping people into an outrage. Again, there's no substance. You have no policy. What's the policy to address these things? The answer is there isn't any. There is not one. Because if there was, we might, we probably would have seen it. We would have seen it passed. It, like, we, again, you had both houses of Congress and the pres presidency. What did you pass? None of this stuff. Why didn't you fix the border then? It's because it's all, it's all gobbledygook. No substance. And it's not popular either. That's the other thing. They tried to repeal Obamacare. That was a platform they ran on. But turns out a lot of people actually like Obamacare. A lot of people like the ACA. Yes. So then you had a bunch of members of your own party that couldn't realistically fuck their own voters so hard that they would actually vote to repeal that. And John McCain, for example, when he was still alive, rest in peace, shot that down in the Senate, thankfully. But like, again, it's like, Get some popular platform ideas. Like, seriously. If you got something that was actually popular, <laughs> then you could do it, and then pass it, and then people are like, oh, let's vote for them next time. <laughs> like, that's how it should work, right? But that's not how it works, so here we are. Magma. Okay. Can't get Beastman's Curved Sword. We have Serpent Gods, Curved Sword, Magma Blade, Nox Flowing Sword, Wing of Estelle, Eclipse, Shotel. Cool. On to Great Curved Swords. We don't vote for, we vote against. Exactly. I, and I think it's 
it's just like the nature of the system where it's like it's too easy. Like you you get you just simply get people more engaged by frustrating them and making them upset about something that they don't want versus something that they do want. Omen Cleaver, Monk's Flame Blade, who can't get the Beastman's Cleaver yet. Bloodhound's Fang, Onyx Lord, it's a more curved sword. Magma Worm, Morgoth's Cursed Blade. Those are done. You love to see it. Katanas. Uchi Katana, Na Nagakiba, Serpent Bone Blade, Meteoric Ore Blade, Moon Veil, Rivers of Blood, Dragon Scale Blade, and then Hand of Melania, which we cannot get yet. Katanas are done for now. Twin Blades. This is a pretty short category also. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, oh, okay. Twin Knight Swords, Godskin Peeler, Gargoyle's Twin, Black Blades, Eleanor's Pole Blade. Done. Next. Axes. Surely there's some axes we don't have. Hand Axe, Forked Hatchet, Battle Axe, Warped Axe. We're missing the Jawbone Axe. Iron Cleaver, Highland Axe, Celebrant's Cleaver, Sacrificial Axe, Ice Rind Hatchet, Ripple Blade, Stormhawk Axe, Rose's Axe. Okay, so we're missing the Jawbone Axe. That's the only one. Can be dropped by Ancestral Followers. There are eight with Jawbone Axes just north then east of the Mausoleum Compound Site of Grace. There are five enemies just west. Okay, let's do the one where it says there's eight. I think these are the ones that are by the tree. Hang on. Just north, then east. Hi, Coco. Okay, here we go. Please tell me they're one shot. Yes. Okay, that was easy. It didn't pop. Maybe I had it and then sold it, because I swear I had a bunch of those already. Okay. On to Great Axes. Ho, ho. Great Axe. Crescent Moon Axe, Long Haft Axe, Executioner's Great Axe, Great Omen Killer Cleaver, Rusted Anchor, Butchering Blade. Gargoyle's Great Axe, Gargoyle's Black Axe. Winged Great Horn we're missing, and Axe of Godric we can't get, so Winged Great Horn. This is also a follower weapon. No, never mind. That's also... Winged Great Horn is Remembrance of Regal Ancestor. Okay, so we're done with Great Axes. The rest are boss weapons. I find it silly to hate anyone because of their political stance or opinions. I mean, if... They're actively trying to infringe my rights, then yes, I would hate them for that. I wouldn't vote for Bernie or Biden because I don't want socialism. What about Biden thinks do you think there's gonna be socialism? I don't know if I want to open this can of worms. Uh oh. <laughs> like socialism? What do we have anything resembling socialism? Alright, curved club we need. Oh, there's several here. We need Curved Club, Spiked Club, and Stone Club. Okay, Curved Club. I'm missing a lot in this category. Okay, 
I think down here would be good. Those two seem like prime candidates for systemic murder. Fallen bridge section just east of this grace. Isn't that where I just was? I think those two have to be it. Like, hate is a strong word, but, like, for real, if, you <laughs> if you're inhibiting progress to the point where, like, it's just making my life progressively worse and more frustrating, then, yeah, like, of course, I'm going to be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, get it together. Voting for Bernie or Biden infringes on my rights, therefore I would not vote for them. I mean, that's a lot different than saying that you hate them. If you just say, I won't vote for them. Or, I'm sorry, that's a lot different than saying that it's because they promote socialism. Like, I can't help but question, like, if that's the reason you're choosing not to vote for them, like, I would question why you think that that is true. Because, number one, Bernie has no reasonable outlook to win anything anymore. He's not, I mean, he's not running anymore, but when he was, he really didn't have a reasonable outlook to win. I like the guy, but like, stepping back from my own personal beliefs, he just did not have a clear path to win. First of all. But then second of all, like, Biden was like the antithesis of Bernie in terms of the Democratic Party. Gate Town. Bernie does promote socialism. I don't know. Okay, what do you think socialism is? Like, define it in the sense, like, what is it about socialism you don't like? Because Bernie has described himself as a democratic, soci democratic socialist, which is a lot different than, like, USSR socialist or command economy socialism. Like, these are... These are very different terms. Democratic socialism is like Scandinavia. Which, again, is more like, we have a public option regarding healthcare. It comes out of your taxes instead of you paying a premium deducted from your from your um, payroll. Curved club done. Two curved clubs. Would you look at that? But, like, if you just don't want that, that's fine. If you just don't think that's a good idea, that's that's perfectly fine. But, like, that's not, it's not socialism in the, in the sense of the word. But I'm just not, I guess I'm just not clear on, like, what, what we're afraid of here. Is it, is it, like, command economy redis redistributing things in a way that's less reactive to a free market? Or is it, like, public health care option? Because I feel like these are two very, very different things. So it's hard to know because of how we, we all think of it differently. All right, Curved Club is done. Spiked Club. I'm being hit by something? Oh, it's a land squirt.
can be farmed from the large demi-human right outside the entrance to Volcano Cave. All right. Congrats on defeating Blade of Mikola. Thank you. Oh, yeah, this one's right by the grace. That's what I like to see. I guess the magma sword wasn't too bad. Uh, it kind of was, because we, we had to farm up all new foul feet for that. But all things considered, this has been a good grind day. We accomplished quite a lot. Because, like... Oh, yeah, I consider myself pretty... Pretty far left. Um, it depends. That really depends when I say that. Um, but I don't want a command economy. Again, I'm very much free market here. Like, you want, you want to be able to react to consumer demand quickly. You don't want to have some, some sort of major shift happen, and then you have to go through a bureaucratic system to respond to it. That being said, it's important to have some sort of guardrails... Hence, democratic socialism. Or, I mean, what we have now is very similar. It's just we have a capitalistic market and we have a government that exists to account for potential externalities of these things for that, that come from a free market system. Because, again, there's a potential that it could actively harm people as firms act in accordance to an incentive structure. There could be consequences to that that actively harm people. Like, hey, it's the cheapest way to make this food, but it actively, you know, harms one in a hundred people that eat it because of some sort of allergen that's very widespread, it's like, okay, well, maybe the FDA should step in and address this in some way. Because otherwise, there's no incentive for companies to necessarily respond to that. Uh, maybe there is, though. It depends. Because it's like, well, if people are dying, then, like, they're not going to be a competitive... They're not going to be making a competitive brand. But... In order to get to that point, people have to have died. Therefore, we create a process through the Food and Drug Administration to make sure that this shit doesn't kill people before it's just released onto the open market. So, like, it's capitalism, but there's, there's guardrails so that people don't get fucked over. <laughs> but again, by misaligned incentive structure. So I guess in many ways, I can only ask, like, what what's the line between, you know, like, socialism that we need to be afraid of versus socialism that works in our benefit that we already have that allows us to take things sort of for granted as being safe? Two can be found in Mikola's Haley. Oh, battle mages. On the graveyard in front of Celia Hideaway. One before the fog in Academy Crystal Cave. Uh, I'm not farming in Halig Tree anymore if I can help it, so let's go to Celia Hideaway, which is down here. Do you believe us to be a democracy or constitutional republic? Dude, this is just semantics. We're a constitutional republic. But for the purposes of a discussion, what difference is it to you? I feel like you're like, is this just like, oh, well, let me just make sure you know your terms correctly. Like, engage with the, the engage with the argument being made. That was easy. Stone club done. Very lucky. Spiked Club, Stone Club, Mace, Morning Star, War Pick, Hammer, Monk's Flame Mace, Vare's Bouquet, Bouquet, Envoy Horn, Nox Flowing Hammer, Ringed Finger, Scepter the All Knowing We Can't Get Yet, and America's Hammer We Can't Get Yet. Okay, on to Flails, of which I think there's only two or three in the game. Flail, Knight Rider Flail, Chain Link Flail, Family Heads, which I have, and Bastard Stars. Bastard Stars, I think, is from Estelle. Yes. So what is the Chain Link Flail, and where do we get it? 
can be dropped from lesser pumpkin heads. The pumpkin head in the encampment north of the foot of the four belfries carries it. Two can be found southwest of the Road of Inquiry. I think we have to do the four belfries one. I didn't think that maybe... Uh, this, this one could be a little rough. We'll see. Vitamin supplement industry isn't regulated a lot. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know much about that, but I guess that's kind of the idea. Like, how do you feel like when you get in your car and you, you just like get in your car, you're like, oh, it's not going to blow up today. Like, there's a lot we take for granted, and it's because it's not because there were cars that did blow up. It's because we have a process that's regulated in place to ensure that cars won't blow up when we start them. <laughs> like, obviously, that would be bad for business. But nothing is act actively really stopping companies from giving you shit that just blows up. That's, that is pretty far up there. We'll, we'll figure it out. The only reason I bring all this up, though, is, again, I think I think we sort of take for granted a lot of things that we assume are like a certain... They're like, oh, of course this will be fine. But in reality, it's because there is a regulatory body to make sure that you're not actively being harmed. And sometimes that fails, to be fair. It's not perfect. But, like, also... I think we went too far for that. It's because it's nighttime and I can't see. But again, so it's more just like, so we already have these things, and we we utilize them, and in some ways we take them for granted, because we just think that's the way it is, and we're okay with that. But then, like, where's the line between, like, now there's too much of it, and now we're at socialism? Like, where is that? How does that happen? What is, uh... How much is too much? Where, like, now we're, now this amount of regulation has now become socialism. I guess I'm not sure. And then, of course, the follow-up question is, what has Biden, of all people, done that moves us in that direction? I would argue Biden kind of does the opposite, but I don't know. Why do I keep losing track of where this pumpkin is? There he is. to go to a place where I can warp out of here. Let me leave. I guess I'll just run.
Back to it, I guess. <laughs> Chain link flail, come on. It says, pumpkin head in the encampment at the foot of the four belfries. A pumpkin head wielding one can also be outside Fort Height. But it will no longer spawn if the fort is cleared. Okay, we can't do that then. In terms of legislation passed, they've been decently happy over the last two years. The economy in the U.S. has really outdone the rest of the world in terms of, like, a recession soft landing that we managed to mostly avoid. Unless you're in the tech sector, which I think was probably running out of time for a while as interest rates have gone up. They ran hot at a low rate for way too long since Obama's second term. They needed to start coming down. And, um... But that we just kept them low for way too long. I benefited because I bought a house at a low rate. I'll take it. But, like, realistically, rates should have started going back up slowly in, like, maybe 2010-ish, 2012-ish. Pretty much as the um, economic recession started softening, probably right after the 2012 election, realistically, I would have liked to see Obama start, um, Obama's Fed start raising rates again um, so that the economy wouldn't have been running too hot for too long. Couple that with... Tax, um, tax decreases that, again, weren't really coupled with any sort of um, revenue or um, spending decrease. You have, you know, mass inflation, of course. Um, but, like, in terms of the fact that, like, legislation in a general sense has been getting passed, I think that's, that's really good. Um, I think the two major things that I criticize Biden on is... Uh, his response to um, Gaza right now, and he's just too old. Like, it's just like there's just too high. There's just too high of a risk that the dude is going to drop dead at any any point. But you could say the same thing about Donald Trump. So it's almost like, and like Donald Trump is obese. So it's like you're two old guys, one in bad health, one in seemingly okay health for his age. So it's kind of hard to. But that's just that's just mo working from the position where it's like uh, these are just simply our two options, which is unfortunate. But here we are. Hey, we got child chat tax credit. We got IR, um, IRA. We got um, infrastructure. Like the fact that we passed that with a tie-breaking vote in the Senate from Kamala Harris is kind of incredible in many ways. Um, when you have a Congress that's so, so evenly split in that way, I expected nothing, like literally nothing. And they passed a substantial amount. So that, it's kind of nice to see. I think there, some of it was at least a little bipartisan. That was, uh, that was, seemed good. Not that I need something but to be bipartisan to be good, but basically in a in a Congress that's this split, you kind of need something's got to give, and that's that's what happened. So like, hey, it worked, you know. Um. I guess let's just come back here for now while we see what's next. Good luck with the grinding and pillaging. Oh, I'm trying. That's the issue with two options. If both are bad, it's really an issue. I mean, I guess I don't see both as, like, bad. Like, neither are great, but they aren't both equally bad. I think there's, like, a very clear difference between these. And generally, you're voting for a party with policies and an administration, and less so the person themselves. I understand that's not necessarily realistic. People are voting for the person who is way too old, which is why I said I agree. I'm not going to, like, pretend that that's not true. But, like, I think the administration that we've seen has been effective, which is kind of the main thing I care about. Like, can you do stuff? Can you get stuff done? Like, surprisingly, again, against what I expected, um, surprising amount of stuff seems to have gotten done in the past uh, three-ish years. Okay, we're on f Great Hammers. 
Large Club, Curved Great Club, Great Mace, Pickaxe, Brick Hammer. We need the Battle Hammer. We have the Rotten Battle Hammer. We need Celebrant's Skull. We have Great Stars. I need the Great Horn Hammer. I have the Envoy's Longhorn. Cranial Vessel Candle Stand. Beast Claw Great Hammer. And Devourer's Scepter, which I think is... Yeah, Burn All. So there's two or three things in this category that I need. So let's go back to Battle Hammer. Dropped randomly by, by hammer-wielding duelists near the royal capital. Um, this is why we did this before. Well, we're not, I didn't plan on killing Malakath and changing Landell anyway, but this is one of those things I knew we needed to do before it was too late. What's the best way to get there? I think... I think it's the Urtree Sanctuary, actually. Rates were low, but housing prices were inflated, but I guess you can't have both at the same time. I mean, housing prices are a little slow to respond. Like, housing prices, realistically, you'd hope would be going down at this point, but they're really not. Um, actually, this is not where I want to be. Like, interest rates were so low that... And then also the pandemic made it so, like, not enough homes were being built for the people that wanted to move in, because a lot of people were not wanting to move. Like, the people that were in houses already didn't want to leave, and the people that were renting that wanted to buy, there just wasn't enough supply. So, just pr rates just kept going up, or housing prices just kept going up and 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 up. Never stopped. Now, you have super high rates, relatively speaking, and you have super high home prices, which is quite frustrating. Um, and the home prices should be coming down in response to that, especially as supply is opening up. And that's just not happening at the rate we want to see. And I think it's because when rates were super low, you just had these large rental corporations buying a ton of property. Which is bad news. Um, here's one of the hammers. That was easy. I think we have to grind these dudes' as set as well. But let's just let's just follow our path here. We got the battle hammer. We'll come back here. Grind them more. Celebrant skull. Is this, gr is this even grindable? On a corpse sitting at the end of a somewhat hidden path along the cliff. Accessible by passing the windmill directly north of Windmill Village. Okay. So we don't have to grind. Windmill directly north of the Windmill Village site of Grace. People who want to sell their house don't want to lose money on it. Well, that's the thing, too. Again, I, I bought my house at, you know, less than 2.5% interest rate. So, like, of course I don't want to sell, because then, like, I have to move somewhere, right? So if I'm selling and I I was financed at, you know, 2.2 or 2.12... Um, that, you know, now I have to buy a new house at a 6 or 7% rate? That's insane. Like, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stay in this house as long as I can. So I don't have any incentive to sell. Unless I absolutely have to. Their set, this will take... Yeah, the, the Gladiator set takes a while. Great stars. I think we need the Great Horn Hammer now. Got this, got this. Celebrant Skull, Great Stars. Yeah, Great Horn Hammer. Let's see where you get that. It's definitely a follower. Probably underground. Dropped by Ancestral Follower located in Shifra River. Directly northeast. There's two easy-to-farm ones patrolling the singing one. Okay, Shifra River. Ancestral Woods. So I just rewound and saw he also canceled the wall the first days he was in office. That's the wall is not an effective deterrent. 
We need to get people who can actually process asylum seekers faster. By not getting enough people who can process asylum seekers, that's why it backs up so terribly. Which, by the way, there's legislation right now that could address this that is purposefully not being passed because it's an election year. That is bipartisan. It was introduced with a, a lot of things in there. It was probably the most Republican-friendly border plan that's been introduced probably ever. And they're not passing it. They won't pass it. Like, I'm not going to lie and say, like... There aren't things in there that Democrats probably also want, but like, that's the point of it being bipartisan. You're getting a lot of what you want and need in that. Because the border is absolutely a problem, but like, realistically, you need a lot of judges and you need more space to house people while you get people through the system promptly and expeditiously. And if you do that, similar to Similar to fucking Steam. When Steam was introduced, piracy of games went down a lot. If you make their, like, a process, an ease of process that is legitimate, people will stop paying money to cross these dangerous, go through these dangerous pathways and come in illegally. Like, that's always, that's always gonna happen, surely. But, like, you're gonna reduce it substantially if you give people a legal pathway. And unemployment is so low right now, it's actually too low, to the point where we absolutely need people coming in here to do jobs that need filled. Especially unskilled labor. 100% we need it. So, like, I, I don't know. I just think there's, like, a reality to the situation where it's not just, like, oh, no, boogeyman border. It's, like, no, there's real issues here. Let's, let's not pretend like there aren't issues, number one. But number two, like... Okay, what's the policy to address these? A wall is virtue signaling. Building like a chain link fence or like a legitimate wall is literally the most virtue signaling thing I've heard in my life. That's not, a, that's not a policy that is actually deterring anything. That's why it was such this meme on like that, that worked against Donald Trump way more because everybody knew there wasn't a real solution. Not to mention, conditions being so poor, likely due to the influence of partly the United States, leading to conditions in uh, South America being to the point where people are so desperate to leave that they're willing to make a journey that far to like try and come into this country illegally is actually kind of crazy to think about. Like, I try to imagine, like, what would it take for me to leave my house, leave everything I have behind completely no belongings and just like walk hundreds of miles it's uh it's crazy to think about there's probably not even a best solution but some less worse exactly and I think I mean I think Barack Obama said it really well I think he was in maybe 2015 or 2016 he's like Perfection or, like, looking for the best is the enemy of progress. You have to look for things that make things better. Not perfect, but, like, a little better. Because you're never, you're never going to get anything done if you're aiming for only success when you live in what is potentially the most, um, I mean, short of the Civil War, we're in the most polarized point of this country's history. So, like, you need to be willing to make compromises and accept, accept things that other people want that you don't and then maybe you can actually get something you want through. I think potentially the Democrats' bigger failure is making it a culture war issue as if to like convince people that the border is somehow not like an actual problem, but it is. The thing is, we need to address it in a practical and realistic manner that actually addresses the problem, which is not a wall and it's not demonizing people who are interested in coming to this country. Again, those those are just virtue signals to get people to the polls, but there's no actual policy or anything that you're implementing that makes a difference. I 
And like, I, I don't know if this is going to be a little like callous. Uh, this is this is not like necessarily an opinion that I'm speaking, but this is sort of reality. You would think that Republicans would be more interested in people from Central and South America coming to the U.S. because they tend to lean very Catholic and by extension will eventually get to a point where they probably will be very likely to vote Republican because they tend to err on the side of social conservatism. So it's interesting that these are the people that we're trying to keep out. Like, you already see this trend happening where you have um, Latino voters who are erring away from Democrats slowly over time. So, like, I, it's just interesting to me. It seems like you're you're working against your own interests if you're trying to keep these people from coming in legally. There's, there are more, there, it, there's too much of an incentive to come in legally. How do we change that? The incentive structure is, well, it's way too difficult to go through the legal process because there's not enough money going through the system to make sure you have enough judges through an expedited process, places to house these people in a humane manner and not separating them from their families and, and saying like, yes, you can come in on a work visa or no, you cannot because of some sort of criminal history or whatever guidelines we want around that. Like it's just, it just feels like there's no practicality to any of this. Because it's too much of a, it's too much of an electoral issue. Again, it gets people agitated. So we don't want to solve it now, because then what's the why? Why do I need to go out and vote? Be this issue doesn't bother me anymore because they actually fixed it. We're in colossal weapons, which means envoy. Uh, oh no, envoy. Envoy horn, great envoy horn, or whatever it's called. Okay. Rotten Great Axe. I need the Duelist Great Axe. We were just there. We're going back. All right. Close that. I guess when we're there, maybe we'll get some of their gear if we're lucky. I don't know. Obviously, this shit frustrates me. Um... I understand there's, you know, a decent chance I'm a partisan hack, but, like, I just feel like there's there's practicality that we could meet somewhere, and that's just out the window. Really, since Gingrich. Gingrich really pushed the nuclear option in the 90s under Clinton um, in just a hyper-polarization that has only gotten worse with the perpetuation of the internet and such. Most people, from my experience, don't care about having immigrants come here as long as it's done legally. 100% agree. So, like, we what what do we need to do to what do we need to do to make that happen? Because it ain't like uh, look. There's a chance some people here are Native American. I kind of doubt it. There's a chance, um, but everybody watching here from the who who's not Native American who lives in the U.S. all have all came here somehow. Their families came here at some point somehow. Um, and you know, like a huge part of um, of that process, like through Ellis Island and all that, is it was kind of an expedited process. They, like, the United States wanted people coming here. We were trying to grow. We, we needed workers. We needed skilled laborers. We needed unskilled laborers. So we got people through. So, like, we need to do that again. <laughs> My family came here and then committed genocide, so whoever came after us can, can't really do worse. Yeesh. I assume you're referring to the Native Americans. I think my family came in like the the big wave in the 1800s, but still, oh yeah, it's kind of built off of the backs of. I mean, literally everything here is based off of the unfortunate uh, history with Native Americans. There's no denying that. Yeah, true. I mean, like they they didn't. They came here when there weren't other people here, but they, but they did migrate to this land, and then we came and infected them with germs, and they all died. Yeah, 
Give me the axe. I guess I should be using the foul foot. It's not too far of a run, but it's far enough that it's slightly up obnoxious. I think ultimately we just, we live in a hyper-polarized world where we're pushed to extremes that then are way too homogenized. There's not much flexibility in straying from those thoughts. Like, I feel like if I was given one political opinion that any individual has, I could probably predict with about 90% confidence, like every other, <laughs> every other opinion that you have um, regarding, you know, social and cultural issues. Um, similarly, you could probably do the same for me. Um, but I, I, again, that's kind of going back earlier about how, like, a lot of our opinions are mostly inherited. And I think we get to a point where there are certain concessions or admissions that we're, like, unwilling to make. Or, like, our group is unwilling to make. Like, again, the border's a great example where, like, step one, just be like, yeah, it's a problem. By saying it's a problem, it feels like you're giving the other the opposing side some sort of win. And so people are unwilling to do that. Nice. But, to, but that's also because you associate claiming the border's a problem with, like, a spider web of beliefs of, like, immigrants are bad, there's some sort of moral decay in our society, maybe potentially going as far as great replacement theory, um, you know, like more and more conspiratorial stuff. Immigrants, criminals come into this country and they kill innocent young white girls. You know what I mean? Like there's this whole nebula of, of attached beliefs that go along with a simple concession of like, okay, this is a problem. Let's solve it in a realistic way. We don't have to go to these extremes of... of making it, a, again, a, like a moral issue. Oh, cool. I think we just need the helm now. But that's why I always... That's kind of... That's where I try to make my starting point, though, is like, I need to try to disconnect those things and look at something and say, like, you know what? This is something that needs solved. I wish that I could get that same feedback from people that I consider on the other side of the aisle from myself. And it feels like, again, it's, it's too much outrage and not enough substance of looking at what are practical problems that exist and what are practical solutions that exist for those problems. We can disagree on those things, but, like, let's at least come to the table about it and... We feel like by, just by going to the table, we're legitimizing things that are far too extreme, and we need to break that link. Okay. Duelist Great Axe. Rotten Great Axe. Golem's Halberd. Giant Crusher. Prelate's Inferno Crozier. Great Club. Troll's Hammer. Dragon Great Claw. We scroll down. Troll's Hammer. Dragon Great Claw. Watchdog Staff. Staff of the Avatar. Rotten Staff. Envoy's Great Horn. Giza's Wheel. Falling Star Beast Jaw. And then Axe of Godfrey is a boss weapon. So it's the uh, it's Envoy Great Horn time. Oh no. Well, we knew it was coming. Here we go. We lack philosophy classes to understand politics, things like sophisms, idea constructions, not Socratic stuff. I mean, kind of. I mean, it's unrealistic to expect that people are going to have some sort of deep philosophical understanding of their moral framework and then use that to construct every belief from that. I think it's realistic to be like, you know, it, I think just people um, 
are going to inherit beliefs from their peer group as they have always done throughout human history. That's fine. But I think the problem is we have two homogenized groups that are getting pulled into fairly extreme directions. One more so than the other, in my personal opinion. Um, where it makes it so that you can't you can't compromise. Because again, it feels like if you give any ground, you're legitimizing things that are way too extreme. And we're like sort of rubber banding ourselves into like the farthest possible. Oh shit. <laughs> and we're just like rubber banding ourselves into like the most extreme possible positions for a lot of things. But like, I'm not a doomer about it. Like, I, I'm optimistic. You see time and time again, like, people are sick of... Like, it's exhausting to get so involved in this constantly. It's like, it's just frankly exhausting. So, like, you see pushback to that at times when... Special elections have been coming up in the last few years. The midterms in 2018, the midterms in 2022. Like, there, there are... There is some clarity here where people are like, I'm just like sick of this. Can we just go back to not having to worry about this as much? It's like, it's constant bombardment. That's what's people, that's what people are tired of. Like, it's just exhausting. I'm tired of hearing about this all the time. It's not worth it. Dude, this has been a banger banter stream. Thank you, everybody who's been <laughs> prompting the banter engine. You've been feeding the machine. That means a lot to me. Because this is a boring ass. This is a boring ass stream. We're just like farming items. See, politics can be fun <laughs> to talk about. <laughs> Like, you know, it's good to, like, as long as you're engaging with people in, like, oh my god, that, wow. It's, that's karma. We've been having a challenging discussion. And look at that. The Lord has answered in an easy great horn farm. The easiest great horn farm of my life, honestly. Oh my gosh. I think that's why younger generations seem to be less into politics. You're either zero or a hundred on an idea, and you must fight for the idea, even if you're not zero or a hundred on it. I, yeah, I completely agree. That's what I mean when I say, like, groups have homogenized a lot, is you're expected to inherit these beliefs, and you've got to, you can't question them. you got to, you got to have an opinion on everything, even though you haven't, you're not really super learned on it. Um, but that's, I think that's like a social media type thing as well. That's another reason why I feel overloaded all the time. It just feels like you're just getting bombarded constantly with stuff that you need to care about or you're, you know, and it, it sucks to say like, well, I don't want to have to care about that. But like, I feel like it's just, there's only so much the human brain can, can take before it's like the anxiety and the stress of like trying to fix every problem in the world is, be, it's beyond us. Fallen Hawks soldiers, Nakron. Like, I want to do what I can. And I, I hate to feel like I'm giving up because I'm like, well, can't worry about that thing today where people are starving or people are dying. You're like, it's, you know, if that was me, I want, I would need everybody to care about that. And I think on a macro level, 
we hope that we can tackle these problems. And that's what, like, government, big business is, is for. To impact these sorts of things and hopefully help fix it. Because we individually can't... We can't... And when you kind of feel that sense of powerlessness and almost a sense of guilt as you want to sort of admit, like, I can't do anything about this. And just thinking about it is just overwhelming me because there's too much of everything all the time. And those people deserve to be helped. And then that also tends to diminish your sense of self of your own problems. And you think like, well... My problems shouldn't be that big of a deal. Why sh I shouldn't feel bad about such and such. Because look at everything else that's going on with everyone else. And then you discount your own problems, which generates a, a, an, ang an anxious spiral. You think like, well, I shouldn't feel bad about this. But I do. Because <laughs> you're human. And your experiences are going to be relative to your life circumstances. And then you sort of... Let yourself feel worse and worse. It's the internet, man. We need to go back to pre-internet days. Get me off this site. No more this, no more stream. I could be talking to nobody right now. <laughs> I could be playing this game, recording it locally. No one sees it, and I just rant about this bullshit. You have to m mail me through the USPS banter topics. And then I will record a video on a VHS tape and I'll mail it back to you. And you'll be like, wow, great engagement on the stream today, Jay Marino. <laughs> I think I need these shields, so we'll kill these dudes a few times as well. I can't believe we've got the Envoy horn that fast. Oh my gosh. What a time to be alive. Come on. I will wait seven months for the VHS <laughs> to ship to you. Hey, and you know, that would do a lot for global shipping. Though honestly... Maybe that's not something we should put a strain on further. All right, we'll, we'll foul foot it. Dear Jay, I wrote you, but you still ain't calling. I left my cell, my pager, and my home phone <laughs> at the bottom. Probably was a problem at the post office or something. 
Anyway, what's up, man? What's been up, man? How's your daughter? My girlfriend's pregnant, too. I'm about to be a father. Guess what I'm gonna call her? I'm gonna call her Bonnie. I heard about your Uncle Ronnie, too. I'm sorry. Anyway, what's been up, dude? I'm your biggest fan. I even got the underground shit that you did with Scam. I even got the shit you did with Ruckus, too. That shit was fat. Apparently, I just need the just normal spear. Can drop from exile soldiers that wielded at Stormvale Castle. Near the Rampart Tower of Br Grace, use the wooden stairs. Really? That's what we have to do? For just spear. It's literally just called spear. You gotta be kidding me. I guess I, I also have to be careful because, again, it can come off really doomer when I'm like, Every, it's too much, I can't care about anything. I can't care about everything. Which kind of sounds like you shouldn't care about anything, which is not true either. But I do think you have to pick your battles. Because, <laughs> again, there are real problems out there that many people face, and a lot of it is, is absolutely righteous. But <clears throat> I think it's worth investigating, you know, within yourself, what is, what's the, what are those important things, and in what ways can you get involved in the most effective way? Which, number one is vote. <laughs> Which, again, it feels minor, but, like, in the larger scheme, that's probably your most powerful tool. Don't let someone take that from you and use it in every election. Now, for people who are experiencing, like, legitimate discrimination, um... You know, me being like, oh, you know, if you care about that, just vote. Like, obviously, that's not, <laughs> that's not assuaging any concerns. I, I get that, too. But I'm saying for, for everybody, in a general sense, if your ability to vote wasn't such a big deal, then people wouldn't be trying to make you not use it or try and persuade you to not use it or just actively try and take it away from you straight up. So use that, period. Like, there's, there's no question. Anytime someone's like, oh, it's pointless, don't do it. Why do they care so much? Why do they care? Why would they tell you not to vote if it didn't, you know, if it didn't matter to them that the vote, that your vote didn't matter? They, it wouldn't, they wouldn't care. They'd be like, fine, go ahead, waste your, it doesn't matter to me. I know it doesn't matter. So like, but why are they telling, why are they advising you not to vote? It's because there's something there that matters. Use it. What camera are you using to show your face while playing a game? I honestly have no idea. I bought this... I bought this maybe four years ago, and I don't remember. And I can't quite read it <laughs> from here, so... I would just... I would get, like, a Logitech. You know, whatever the highest quality webcam is, short of going, like, full-on production camera. If you, you know, I don't even really love this one, but it's fine. Only 37% of registered voters vote. Yeah, that's uh, that's what I'm saying, though. That's a big problem. And in some cases, it's because it's made as difficult as possible. Like, I'd like to see... I'd like to see... You know, why can't voting day be a holiday? 
Honestly, I'm not really opposed to voter ID so long as there is a state slash federally provided ID for people. Because in states where voting ID is required, um, what happens is then you have DMVs that get shut down such that you have people that have to go j basically jump through hoops to get a valid ID to vote. Even though they are, you know, legitimate citizens and like if they hypothetically could get a valid ID to vote, it's di they're disincentivized from doing so because it's such a pain in the ass. So like, yeah, sure, do voter ID. I don't care. Do voter ID if that makes you feel better. But you have to couple that with providing people IDs that are legitimate voters or could be legitimate voters on a voter roll. And even in, even in states where there isn't strict voter ID laws, um, I mean, there's, your, your identity is still verified. Like, you, you're on a, if you, re, you register to vote, you're on a voter roll. So if someone comes in and votes with your name and then you show up, they're going to be like, oh, you voted already. And you're like, well, that wasn't me. And then that becomes like a case with the county registrar. So it's not like, it's not like you just have a flood of people that show up to vote. Like, you still have to register to vote period. Like, that's... I don't know. I've worked elections. I've talked about this before. I've been an election worker. One of the things that I chose to care about semi-recently was this whole pushback to election integrity, which I think is mostly nonsense. Actually, it's all nonsense. Go and work the day, man. Spend 16 to 18 hours doing it, and maybe you'll understand that there's a lot of veracity behind our elections. And there's been... Plenty of court cases of late that prove it as well. Elections in my country always give a day off. That's nice. You, you need to show an ID to vote. Like, do you have to register, though? Like, do you have to register to be on the voting rolls? And then you show up and show your ID, or do you just you just show up, period? Like I'm not sure why automatic voter registration isn't a thing. I'm not sure if there, we have some sort of data to show like correlate like does automated voter registration correlate with more fraud or attempted fraud? I, I don't know. I, I just suspect that this stuff probably hasn't been studied because nowhere has I think that some places have automatic voter registration. There's the spear. Literally just spear. <laughs> People that believed in the my vote doesn't matter, so I'm going to not vote mentality. That's de Yeah, and that's definitely young people fall into that. Every election cycle, it's like, young people are going to show up this year and make the difference. And they never do. Never. Every election, it's the same story. Young people are going to show up this year. They never do. And then they're usually the ones, as we were talking about earlier, they're always the most passionate about stuff. But they never show up and use their most powerful tool. Because for them, it has to be something that's loud and it's something that's validated. So you shoot things online at people and you get a bunch of likes and that's giving you what you're asking for. Voting, you don't get that kind of feedback. It's thankless. So it doesn't feel like it has any power. That's, uh, that's just an unfortunate mindset to have. I do think, you know, fighting the fight online is not necessarily the worst thing in the world. I think it has less of an impact, maybe, than people give it credit for. Um, but, like, you know, raising awareness is raising awareness. That's not a bad thing. So I wouldn't say, like, you're stupid if you fight online. I do it all the time. I love it. <laughs> I fucking love fighting with people online. Claimants, harpoon, celebrants, rib break. So I, mean, I need spiked spear. We have torch pole. I need rotten crystal... Wait. I have rotten crystal. I need normal crystal spear. Okay, hang on. Let's go. Let's do the... Let's do the spiked spear. 
can drop from one spear-wielding marionette soldier just outside Witchbane Ruins. Around Converted Tower. That's up here, right? Young people showed up in 2020, especially by mail-in ballot, at least in the U.S. Um, that's good to hear. Again, I think if you looked at, like, relative, relative to other generations, it stayed about, like, everybody, like, way more people voted in 2020, which is great, than, uh, you know, in general. I guess I'd have to look up to see, like, did the proportion of young people increase at all, or is it still about the same? Um, but, like, yes, in terms of quantity, absolutely more, more voted, which is very nice. And you might be a young person watching this and being like, hey, I fucking voted. And I'm like, and I'll tell you, like, great. That's great. I'm very happy to hear that. I'm not complaining about you. <laughs> You're doing the Lord's work. Keep it up. But when the largest voting base are people who are, like, fucking over 65, then, like, of course, their opinions are going to be overrepresented in our, in our government. But this is what I mean when I say, like, we need to try and make it more convenient. We want to make sure it's secure, but we want to make it as convenient as possible. Because people over 65 are overrepresented, number one, because, you know, they're just old and have lived long enough to know that voting actually has major impacts, but also, they got a lot of fucking time on their hands. They're not doing anything else. They're not doing shit all. So yeah, they're gonna go and vote every single time. They're gonna show up at their local board meetings and complain about a stoplight. They're gonna do that stuff. There's the spiked spear. You love to see it. That's why it's like, it's important to me to find out, like, what can we do to make this easier for people without losing integrity okay spiked spear we got celebrants rib break torch pole inquisitors girandol girandola i don't know i need the crystal spear i need the clean rot spear i have the death ritual spear and i have the bolt of grand sack so i need crystal spear and clean rot spear both of these crystal spear found inside celia highway okay Don't have to farm it. Yeah, I think, you know, young people have... They're fighting a, a battle of what feels important like i i can't i hate to like do like young people are just stupid like i i really 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 don't want to sound like that it's just again they're just not incentivized there's not the correct incentive structure in place to ex to show them why it should be important to them there there's a lot of messaging to them to make them feel like their vote doesn't matter Apparently there's a there's an invisible wall here somewhere. Oh god! Oh jeez! No! Don't don't do it again! Like, especially as you just see, you just look around the world and you just, you see places where people just don't have any represent, every, any representational power. And it's just like, 
you know, don't take it for granted. It's not... I'll, I'll use the fucking meme... I'll use the meme um, phrase. Like, it's not free. And I don't mean, like, the blood of patriots must spill and our soldiers, you know. I, I mean, kind of, but, like, it's just, like, the vigilance to not not lose the system of government we have because it can very easily to be taken away. Now, not very easily. We did survive the past, you know, four to eight years that our institutions managed to hold, but it kind of feels like barely. Head towards the boss hugging the right wall. When you reach a body with an item, which I would have picked up already. Ah. Ha ha. Crystal spear. Welcome back, Samuel. Dude, we've been ranting for like legitimate hours. What a time to be alive. Holy fuck. Drops from the spear wielding lesser clean, clean rot knights just south of the heart of Ionia by Commander O'Neill. Very low drop rate. It can also drop from the ghostly clean rot knights in War Dead. Drops from the spear wielding clean rot knights in Alphael. Closest directly outside the prayer room. That's probably where I'm going to go. The swamp is not a bad idea either. Jay Political is almost as good as Sexy Sax Hour. <laughs> oh, I do need to leave soon. It's about dinner time. My wife's probably downstairs like, what the fuck is he even talking about? He's like a lunatic up there for hours. <laughs> hey, Cheek Cheek. The grind is going well. We've gotten through several weapons categories already. We've really, we've really made great progress. What's the rant about today? Dude, we've been talking about all sorts of shit. And I gotta thank everyone here in the chat. Both agreeers and disagreeers. You've been really, you've been feeding the banter engine and I appreciate it. Like as quaint and, and kind of naive as it sounds, I just like, what needs to happen to lower the temperature? Like I almost feel awkward and uncomfortable like talking about this on stream for a few hours because i feel like the right if the right person hears this they would be inflamed like furious and i'm like look i just like i just have some ideas and i i feel like i'm decently well read and learned on certain topics and i enjoy talking about them maybe i'm incorrect on some of them i'm willing to have that discussion but like it just feels like we're kind of like past that point. Again, I, it almost feels naive to be like, oh yeah. Um, the only way to have the discussion is in the most heated way possible. Like you can get a little intense. That's kind of fun. But also it, it just depends. Like if you're going, if you're talking with someone who has like the most extreme views possible, it becomes sort of impossible. Like, um... Like, people who, like, like an accelerationist or, like, a tanky who, like, actually is like, yes, communism. We're, we should just become a communist country. And it's like, oh, okay, like, you can try, but, like, good luck. I don't think anybody agrees with you. Whoops. And also, again, there's no, like, there's no practical way to implement that. And generally, the ideas are fairly harmful to a lot of people. But that's something where, like, it's kind of hard to have a realistic conversation with someone where you're like, hey, let's talk about the border and, like, you know, let's talk about what is an actual problem, what are realistic solutions. And then someone's like, well, actually, the problem is our fundamental system of government. And you're like, okay, you're not really here for this discussion. You're, like, living in fantasy land. Like, you can have that conversation in a different way with someone else, but like, 
you're just derailing this. It just, it just makes no sense. It's not helpful. It's not interesting. People don't want to have it because it's... Well, it's difficult. Yeah, it's difficult to understand. But, like, very similar to what we were talking about at the beginning of the rant. Like, a huge part of it comes down to, like, you want to try to understand, like, everybody's belief, even if it's outlandish, offensive, awful to you, like, it's worth at least understanding where it came from, I think. Because the only way you're going to deprogram these people is coming and meeting them where they're at. And that's really hard. Nobody wants to do that, and I don't think it's the responsibility of every person to do that. But that's the only real way that it works. I wish that there was a better way, but that's the only way. So even if it's fake, I mean, hopefully, you know, you, there's some charitability or some genuineness to... Again, that understanding process. But even if it's 100% fake, you can still go through it and get to that level of trust with someone. And then you could sort of start nudging them away from the ledge. But like, like you had mentioned, um, a lot of folks just like they're not willing to do that. But it's hard. So I understand why. And it's a lot easier and also way more intuitive to just be like, hey, you're wrong. Here's why you're wrong. Look at the facts. You're stupid. Um, please change your attitude because you misunderstand the situation. But, unfortunately, that's not going to actually result in any change. It feels good to do, though, so that's probably why people do it. Ooh, that was close. Ah, like, I'm not going to lie. I like doing that, too. <laughs> it's fucking fun. We've forgotten how to disagree with each other. I think it's because the there's a path of less resistance, which is going online and finding a community where you can be validated for all your opinions. Instead of trying to figure out how to live with people around you in real life, which is no longer really necessary. People, like, don't have to do that anymore. So we don't. But it's, it's a two-way street, too. It's not like, hey, I expect you, someone who's been, like, flipping, you know, outright discriminated against, to be accepting and, and tolerant and listening to the people who have opinions that outright lead to your negative life experiences. That's not fair. Like, the thing is, like, that needs to happen on both ends. Like, the charitability needs to go both ways, and it, it just doesn't. Dude, it all comes back to the online dating, can I tell you? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. When you don't have as many options, you know, you go to school and you meet... You know, you're with a group of friends. One of the guys, you, you might, if you saw him on a dating app, you're like, oh, that's not my type. Oh, he's he's 5'10". He's not six foot. Um, I don't know why I'm using it from the perspective of a woman. <laughs> um, I think it's 
easier too in the perspective of online dating because the standards are higher from that way, from that side. But like, oh, this you know this woman seems to have like strong political opinions or is like comes off as too bossy. I wouldn't like that. But like maybe you have a group of friends and she's like a friend of a friend. You meet her and then like when you're able to give someone the chance in real life or like you're almost forced into having to like spend time with someone, you might end up really liking them. I feel like that's how a lot of relationships end up starting. But when you're just looking at a screen, then you're able to like filter people out by these like kind of arbitrary checkboxes of what you think you like. But I think a lot of people don't actually know what they think they like. I think they know what they think they're supposed to like. And then when you spend time with people, you might actually really like them. Someone on a dating app for the last few years, I 10% agree, and then that was corrected to 150% agree. I'm like, wait a minute, that's a 10%. That's a very like this very specifically low number. <laughs> okay, as soon as I get the spear, I think we're gonna end for today. I'm running out of gas. We've collected a lot, and uh, and it's about dinner time. I'm gonna go make dinner with my wife. somewhere between 10 and 150. <laughs> I, I, I am a little concerned that, like, again, what I can be saying is misconstrued as, like, hey, you get the shit, you've gotten the shit end of the stick your whole life, but I'm telling you, put up with it and tolerate those people and just be nice to them. You have to hear them out. Um, and that's, that's really not the message that I would want to send. Um, because generally, you know, in my, in my belief system would be, you know, identifying with folks in these positions. It's more so, again, it needs to come from the other end, more so. But if, if, you know, someone is trying, then, like, have some grace with them. It, it's, it's, you know, similarly, it's like online dating. You see someone, maybe they don't 100% match up to what you like. You give it a shot. You go on one date. You kind of like it. Um, but it's just like not perfect and then you, you just ghost as opposed to being like, you know what? Let's do a second date and see if maybe this maybe this is something I'd really like My keyboard is broken so I often miss some letters and numbers But as with most of my opinions on, on looking at this stuff and why it doesn't happen, the incentive structures just aren't there. That's really what it all comes down to. I think we have too many paths of, e of least resistance right now that we can take that we, you know, maybe 20-ish, 20, 20 20, 30 years ago were not an option. Now that they're there, you're just gonna take those, you're just gonna do that. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? Again, it's an incentive structure. It all started with dating? Kind of. Not really. I mean, it's the same point I'm making now, which is... You sort of have a... A comfort zone of choice. Which is very artificial, and it creates a very bad environment. Very bad mindset. It's literally all the internet's fault? True. At the very least, it's more that the internet has had massive impacts on the way we function and communicate with each other, and, like, it's examined to an extent, but I just don't feel like... 
most people, this sounds really condescending, but I just feel like most people have, like, don't really think about it. They're just like, well, this is just life. And I can, commu I, this is how I communicate, and this is how I interact with people, and... Especially, I mean, to be fair, too, a lot of people were born, you know, at a time when it was, it's just so integrated already, you don't know what it was like before it existed as a thing. God, give me the flippin' spear. I mean, I, I almost started talking about a different topic, which might be too controversial, unfortunately. But it's more like there have been things in recent memory where they are, they are unfortunately controversial. And, like, the situation is dire enough where, like, you don't have time to go through this process of, like, let me understand why you believe what you believe. Like, there's, like, a public safety matter where it's like, look, we don't have time for this. Like, get with the program. Figure this out. Okay. Like, we don't have time to go through this sociological examination of how you ended up this way. And you're contending with forces that are trying to program people to feel a certain way about something that previously they didn't, you know, with an opinion that they didn't hold. Now suddenly their mind has changed 180. Like, how do you contend with that when there's such a strong force pulling them in one direction? Again, the only way you can do it is, like, through charitability and grace. But sometimes you don't have the luxury of doing that. Sometimes you don't have the time. Let alone the will. That's, you know, having the will to do it is enough. But then being like, okay, this isn't something that we can just, like, take our time with. This is something that is a societal public health crisis. So, like, can we please just, like, figure this out? <laughs> But that's why I say, like, COVID broke people's brains. It, it, like, it broke my brain. Not for the same reasons I think it broke a lot of people's brains towards the, like, anti-establishment, anti-institution bend. But, like, my brain is broken. I just lost so much faith. So much faith in, like, when, when there's a crisis, people come together and they figure out what to do. It just, it just like, I just lost all. I'm very cynical about that now. Very sad. I hope that I can start, um undoing that mindset that I have built from that. Give me the flippin' spear, dude. This is a tough grind as well. As a 26-year-old, I don't know or remember how it was before. Yeah. Like, dude, we used to just... We didn't have cell phones. Like, we just didn't have them. They didn't exist. We didn't have the technology. You just go outside... And you'd play with your friends, and you'd just come home at, like, 8 p.m. Your parents had no idea where you were. You'd just, like, wander through the woods. You'd play at the playground. You'd go to the... Like, you'd be a teenager. You'd go to the mall. You'd go to the movies. You didn't, like... You couldn't buy tickets online. You just went. You're like, I, I don't know. What do you want to do today? We'll just, like, go... We'll go putt-putt. We'll go to the movies. Like, kids still do this, but it's all heavily organized and tracked through like your phone and you can constantly be like reaching out to people who need to know where you're at at all times like that did not exist like I would have to like before I had my driver's license I would have to call my mom to come pick me up like if I would have band practice and it ended early after school I'd have to call her from a pay phone with a quarter and be like hey I need you to come get me it's we ended early Oh my gosh. We're getting, like, everything multiple times except the spear. We all miss our childhood? I mean, I don't really miss being a kid. <laughs> it's... I'm just lamenting on the difference in... The difference that the internet brought. And I had the internet when I was a kid. It was just later on when I was a kid. So... I don't know. It's, it's hard to it's hard to think about, again, if you had, hadn't gone through it. Similar to, it's hard for me to imagine what it was like 
pre-industrial revolution, pre-cars. You know what I mean? Like, it's a totally different way of life. Troubled childhood lore confirmed. Nah, I had a, I had an easy childhood. <laughs> it's just like when you're a kid, you have no independence. You don't have any, you don't have much agency. There's a lot of things you don't understand. You're hormonal. You're desperate for, I mean, I guess everybody, even in their adult years, could be desperate for friends, desperate for admiration. Just a lot of angst. Trying to get a girlfriend. I mean, again, this... This is something that stretches into adulthood for many people, especially now, so I can't really say that, but... Like, especially as a teenager, you're all going through puberty. Your hormones are going crazy. Like, it's, it's, it's a wild time. Nobody likes it. Nobody likes being a teenager. Nobody likes being financially dependent. Like, yeah, I can move out. I can I can get a job. I can get my own place. I can get my driver's license. I can get my car. Oh, yeah. Like, ain't nobody going out picking up a girl and bringing them back to your parents' house? See your whirlpools. In honor of the modern political climate, I'm going to refuse your explanation in favor of what I want to believe. True. Based. Problem is we politicize things that shouldn't be politicized. I guess rewinding a topic. Yeah, exactly. I, I agree. Again, but, but like, how does that happen? And I think that there are... I mean, I guess... I <laughs> feels weird of me to say this, but like, I just straight up think it's, you know, conspiratorial thinking on my end. I think it's like absolutely a purposeful, centralized, cultural push which is like the literal definition of a conspiracy, right? There's like a group of people and they're like trying to enact something that's like hidden. That's, I think that there are like think tanks and organizations that think, how do we activate people via outrage to get them to align with our interests and to vote in our favor towards our interests? Okay, well, you've got these You know, what are the avenues available to us? I think that was that they, that there's an avenue for you. Okay, let's pull on that thread and look where we ended up. It spreads like wildfire. And then it becomes sort of self-sufficient. You don't need some sort of centralized pusher of it. It just becomes just becomes the thing. Yeah. Cool. Let's go sell our extras. Is that the last spear I needed? Yeah, spears are done. Where does that leave us? Halberds, reapers, whips, fists, claws, light bows, bows. Okay, we're through all like the really big categories, honestly. This is great. Um, the gear, on the other hand, like the wearable gear is a totally, that's... That's a whole thing.
I don't know if that's a very crazy conspiracy. I think that's actually pretty on the money. I, no, I know. I'm just I'm just lamenting because I had mentioned how like I think we're in an age where it's not even so much left versus right. We're in an establishment versus anti-establishment age right now. And, you know, it feels anti-establishment of me to create a conspiracy to say that there's some secret cabal of people that sort of light the match underneath the powder keg of a culture war issue sort of waiting to be ignited when otherwise it wouldn't need to be. It would just be a societal thing that we can solve as a group. Um, but they choose to light the match and then it spreads on its own. It takes a life of its own. So, like, I think definitionally that is a conspiracy, but I, I hear what you're saying. <laughs> Why does he still say this, even though I've told him where everybody is? Okay. You know what actually started this all? It was it was our friend Whirlpools who had le just recently left, who had brought up how like he doesn't like how when he she I assume he uh, doesn't like when games are like politicized, and I sort of started going off on that. Um. That's what that's what tr triggered the rant the the two to three hour long rant maybe more. Holy shit! What a fun time. Well, I took you my man to lay out your own. Oh, the clean rot knight sword. We got yeah, lots of those. Whoa. Dude, really? I'm in... I'm in flippin'... Round table. I'm just trying to sell stuff. You're summoning me as a hunter. That was two hours ago? Hell yeah. You can talk politics with me anytime. It's like talking to a mirror. I, and I, I think maybe, too, it's a function of, like kind of getting older because like even our friend from earlier who was on the other side of the the spectrum from my own beliefs um i think they got him good i don't want to have to trudge through the swamp I was like relatively non-combative about it even though i was fairly hostile <laughs> And I just, like, I think at a certain age, too, like, you just feel less inflamed about it. Like, I have a lot of passion about this. But I also measure, I try to measure myself a little bit to sort of acknowledge, like, even though I definitely don't agree um, with a lot of things that folks on the other side of myself would argue, like, there's ways that I can deliver my opinion so that they don't feel immediately defensive. Or at least I can try to do that. I'm not always... I don't, Sometimes I choose not to do that. But, like... <laughs> um, like, there is a way where you can go in and you can, like, add a lot of qualifiers. Make sure that you sort of are making clear, like, yeah, I understand the other side comes from this perspective, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Do they deserve that? From my perspective, not necessarily. But, like, if you, if you do that, you're going to have a lot more success. And so, like, in a way, I guess it can be viewed as, like, I'm sort of chilled out a bit, and that does lead to some success. Alternatively, it can be really fun to just go fucking off. <laughs> it's not really fair, though, because, like, I'm here, I have the microphone, 
So, like, arguing with people who don't really have the same... The same ability to project their opinion is not necessarily fair, but it is fun. A lot of those fur raiments. Maybe I did I sell them all? I'm oh no, here they are. Fur shaman. I really didn't get that many. See you, Simon. Was a fun talk. Take care, everyone. You should seek out less like-minded RTS YouTubers. <laughs> All right. I, um, I'm going to head out. When we come back, we'll pick up our continued farm with the Great Spears. Again, it really feels like we've... We've really... We've made a lot of progress today. I think the next the big step is going to be gear. Um, not weapons, but, like, wearable stuff. Lance, Tree Spear, Serpent Hunter, Saluria's Tree, Vike's War Spear, and then Mogwin's Sequence Spear is not available. Halberds. Halberd. Oh, we're missing a bunch here. Oh, we're missing a ton here. Oh, no, no, we're not. Hang on. Halberd, Banished Knight Halberd, Lucerne, Glaive, Vulgar Militia Chotel, Vulgar Militia Saw. Hang on. No, no, we're not missing a bunch. Guardian Sword Spear, Gargoyle Halberd, Gargoyle Black Halberd, Knight Rider Glaive, Pests Glaive, Ripple Crescent, Golden Halberd, Dragon Halberd, Loretta's... I, I have them all. 5, 10, 15, 21. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 10... Wait. I got off there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And we've got 5, 10, 15, 16. Okay. Look at that. Halberd's done. Reapers. I think I only have two. I'm surely missing some of these. So I have Scythe and Winged Scythe. We're missing the Halo Scythe and the Grave Scythe. Those are both farmable. One from um, those who live in death and one from Clean Rot Knights. Okay. So that's where we'll come back to are, are the, the Reapers. Then the whips are gonna are looking like they're gonna be difficult to farm. There's six of them, and I have four. One is farmable, and one is from a boss. Fist weapons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wait, I never got the. I never got the cipher pata. That's in round table. Hang on. Before we leave, I'm just going to get this because I can't believe I never got this. Yeah. Okay. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills.
<laughs> keep yeah, I'll be roombing the, the lands between. Okay, now I'm leaving. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for putting up with my crazy, my crazy ranting today. Holy fuck. It was fun, though. See ya.